It is a perfect spring day in the Pocono Mountains of Eastern Pennsylvania. The NASCAR Sprint Cup stars are at the ready to run 400 miles. Yesterday, this area plagued by weather. Today, not a cloud in the sky, no chance of rain. Okay, a few clouds, no chance of rain. So, we hope you've enjoyed our abbreviated Fox Sports pre-race show. Let's go trackside for the command. Here to give today's command, Caroline Shaver, direct, daughter of Charlie Shaver, Chairman and CEO, Exalta Coding Systems, Joe McDougal, Senior Vice President and Chief Human Resource Officer, and his daughter, Julia. On behalf of our 13,000 employees and 120,000 customers around the world, Exalta is delighted to sponsor this race, and more importantly to say, Drivers, start your engines! As your children's books would say, it's a blustery day. Winds from 15 to 20 miles an hour, blowing straight down the front straightaway. That flag looks starched straight out. Not much humidity. Highs in the low 70s, beautiful sunny day. So let's go racing. But it rained all day and half the night yesterday. We've got a completely green racetrack. You've had very little practice time. What's on your mind as you well, get ready to go green? Well, Mike, I've had a day and a half to think about turn one. And this turn one, especially on the original start, they fanned four and five wide. I don't know, restart maybe 150, 160 miles per hour as you go down there, 200 once we get up to green. And then they got a downshift and out break one another, go three, four wide as you get through the corner. Uh, then I woke up this morning and I saw the flag blowing straight out, only going to complicate things even further. So you've had too much time on your <laughs> Too much time to think. <laughs> too much time in the man cave. <laughs> so haven't we all? Oh, we have. Yeah, it's it's going to be dicey. There's no question about that. We had very limited practice before we qualified. Matter of fact, some guys didn't even get a lap. They right. made their practice lap qualifying. So that's unusual. Then we had no practice or very little before, before the race. Rained all day yesterday. We got a green racetrack, got a different tire, got a different aero package. What could go wrong? <laughs> Nothing. That was yesterday. <laughs> 55 minutes of practice, and now we are ready to race for 400 miles.
this front straight away in all of NASCAR. Green flag, let's get back to racing here, boys. It's a high speed oval, but you shift like a road course. Whoa, big slide. The field has rolled off pit road. It's time for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series on FS1. Hope you're having a great Monday as the field comes around turn three. Here's the Geico starting grid. It's an all Penske Ford front row. Brad Keselowski is first pole of the year and Joey Logano. In row number two, Matt Kenseth won here last summer. Kevin Harvick's been a runner up in two of the last three here. Carl Edwards, two time Pocono winner, and Tony Stewart, a two time winner, has his best start of the season. Jimmy Johnson's won here three times. Dale Earnhardt Jr. swept the two races here two years ago. And in row five, two time Pocono winner Kurt Busch and four time winner Danny Hamlin. Let's dial up uh, front row starter here, Joy Logano. Joy Logano, DW here, buddy, you got me? Yes, sir, I got you. All right, great job in qualifying. Start up on that front row, but Joey, the Gibbs cars have been so dominant this year, but it looks like you guys may have something for them today. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think these uh, both these team Penske cars are uh, pretty fast here, unloaded with uh, limited practice. I think we're pretty good at race trip as well. So excited, Pocono's always been a good racetrack for us, and uh, we've come close to winning with the 22 car here a few times now, and uh, especially the last couple. So. Uh, we're excited to get the show Pezzo forward and uh, Victor Lane hopefully by the end of this thing. You know, Joey, a lot of changes uh, coming here with a different tire, but your teammate there did do the tire test. Has that helped both of you? It sure doesn't hurt. You know, these uh, these real changes, you know, there's, there's such big changes when you get to the racetrack, um, not only for the drivers, but for the teams, you know, trying to figure out where the balance is going to be. So uh, the simulation department, everyone does a great job of uh, getting our cars really close right off the trailer, but it definitely changes the game a little bit when you're uh, inside the race car and poking down in the turn one a little bit faster than normal. All right, my friend, well, have a great day and put that thing in victory circle. Step four, we're on it, thank you. Logano looking for his first win of the year. Among the drivers he'll have to beat, Martin Truex Jr., can he make it back-to-back -back wins here at Pocono? As we take a look at today's Sunoco fueling victory. What do you Martin. say we talked to Martin Truex Jr.? Hey, Martin, this is Jeff up in the FS1 booth. You got me. Hey, Martin Truex Jr., this is Jeff uh, up in the FS1 booth. You got me. All right, we're having a little radio communication. Try uh, we're on channel two. Try we're on channel, try two. channel two. There you go. Yeah, that'll, 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 that'll help. Channel two. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Martin Truex Jr., this is Jeff Gordon up in the FS1 booth. You got me? I got you, Jeff. What's happening? Oh, man. Sun's out. Clouds. Wind. A lot of great things going on. But, uh, man, you're coming off a dominating win from the pole last week. But this week, you're starting much further back in 17th. What kind of chances are you going to have to take to get to the front and keep this momentum going? Well, there's a lot of difference on the track today. Like you said, the conditions are way different. So it's going to throw a lot of guys for a loop, and hopefully we'll hit it right. We can pass a bunch of them. And then uh, we'll just have to wait and see really what the strategy brings. So got some, got some ideas in there. Cole's planning on some things, and uh, we'll see if we can make it work. Well, starting at 17th, you've got to be thinking about this start. Uh, we've seen them get pretty wild and four and five wide. Uh, plus, you got to throw in the downshift. Uh, you know, what's your mindset? How are you approaching this original start here? Hopefully get a good start, try to find a hole, pass a few of them. Hopefully, uh, if our car will turn good off of turn one, I'm hoping to be the one on the bottom making it three or four wide. So we'll just see what happens here. All right, well, we're certainly looking forward to watching and have a great one. Good luck. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Have a good Monday up there. Thanks, Martin. He rolls off 17th. Let's see what stories our pit road reporters are working on for the first few laps here. 
Well, Mike, today, Kurt Busch works without his crew chief, Tony Gibson, who's serving a one-race lug nut suspension. In place of Gibson will be lead engineer, Johnny Klossmeyer. Now, while Gibson is just a text message away and these laps here at Pocono are long enough, they'll be able to confer on key decisions. Gibson doesn't want to be the middleman. If he sees something, he'll say something. But otherwise, Klossmeyer will be the leader of this team today and just maybe lead Kurt Busch to his first win of the season. Matt Yoakum. Vince, it's been a challenging month and a half for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 team. In fact, when you look at his results, he's failed to finish inside the top 10 in five straight races, something that he hasn't done going all the way back to 2011. But Jr. knows here comes Pocono. He's the only driver to repeat with a victory since the repave. In fact, he told me they reverted back to a setup that they've run here the past three years. Just not enough time in practice to see if the trends are to his liking. A lot of questions waiting for answers here on the 88. Jamie Little. Well, Kyle Larson has been the topic of conversation for the past four weeks. People wondering, when is he going to get his first win? Well, I'll tell you, it could come right here today. This has been a great track for him. His worst finish, 12th. He's in a brand new race car once again. And oh, by the way, on Saturday, he won that rain shortened Xfinity race. A lot of momentum on the 42 side. They're starting mid-pack 21st, but they feel like they have the car to get him back to the front. Larry Mack. Jamie, to win at Pocono, every element of that race car and that race team has to be in place. You heard Martin Trex Jr. tell Jeff Gordon about strategy. This today will be the most important tool that crew chief has. Strategy will be all over the place. Now let's take a look at our race analysis. We're going to go 160 laps and 400 miles. Pit road speed, 55 miles per hour. Pay attention, fuel window, 32 to 36 laps. Since we've not been on the track since Saturday, competition costing at lap 15. And on our grip level scale, the racetrack, one to five, four is the grip level of this track. Mike? Thanks, Larry. In the open, we talked about the wind, and it's going to be a tailwind shoving you right down the longest front straightaway in all of NASCAR. Well, Mike, not only does that just make the cars carry more speed down in there, but you don't have the air pushing on the front of the car and, and creating downforce. So the cars are going to be pretty light as they do that downshift there in turn one. Yeah, yeah, Mike, that front straightaway, 3,740 feet long. And, folks, the first 15 guys starting this race today, the first 15 have all won something at this racetrack. As we get a green flag in the air, and boogity, 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 let's go racing, boys! Look at this. How many wide did you say, brother? I'm not sure if Martin was quite uh, ready for that. Wow, that was wild. I counted seven. I closed my eyes. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to watch. Wow. But somehow they managed to get too wide and threw one. Down the Long Pond straightaway. Snuggled up against the town of Long Pond, Pennsylvania, and toward the tunnel turn. Mike, I think you remember we saw Joy Logano when qualifying was over with. He was upset that, that his teammate beat him for the pole. So he's going to he's going to avenge that right here. Harvick to second. Keselowski now third. Kenseth fourth. You can really hear Harvick working the throttle there. You know, this first lap, got to be pretty careful. The pressures aren't quite up on the tires. Not exactly sure what the grip level is like. It could jump out from underneath you in a hurry if you're not careful. Kyle Larson took him three wide, back to double wide before the start finish line, trying to complete the pass on Chris Buescher. Dipping and diving all over the place. And look wow. at this. Oh, oh, okay, he's second, he's third, he's fourth. <laughs> no, wait, he's second, he's third, he's fourth. This no is hold back. This is not the way Keselowski <laughs> saw this opening lap. <laughs> not at all. Matt Kenseth really impressed me on Friday. Got no practice. Went out there and qualified third. What I like there, not only uh, are we seeing some great speed out of Matt Kenseth, it was a great move, as we see Carl Edwards going to go inside and uh, really attack this two car. Looks like everybody's trying to take advantage uh, of, of the two car losing his momentum on this first lap. Well, we're going to see this a lot when cars are side by side on these long straightaways. Watch for that car to get a big draft from behind and take them three wide and make the pass. Now there's a couple of good plays to pass, certainly down here into turn one, as you see here. That's probably the best place. you got to be cautious passing these guys on the outside anywhere else. Edwards fifth, Kurt Busch up to sixth after starting ninth. I think every driver's personality really comes out at this racetrack. And, and for me, this 
track really suits uh, Kurt Busch. He, he really does a great job being aggressive with the downshift. He does great on road courses, and this is a track that suits his driving style. But that opening lap, you could see him working traffic, taking advantage of those cars side by side, and making some big moves, and that's what Kurt Busch really likes to do. Joey Logano up by a second and a half to Harvick, Keselowski, oh, trouble. and oh, no. Matt DiBenedetto. Caution waves at lap four. I think the, I don't think he hit anything, guys. I think he just spun. I don't think you got the wall, did you? Oh, so I come down now? Yeah, come get tires. That was coming up. That was in turn three, where DiBenedetto spun. Now they decide not to come in and t change tires. Now he oh. was 34th. Whoa. He just got yeah, wide. He just got up high, and there's not any grip up there right now. It's dirty, and uh, he just kind of, the car come around on him. But he did a really great job of keeping it off the wall. Well, DW, he was already in dirty air being that far back in the field, so not a lot of grip already. And then he gets wide up into the, the as you say, the gray, and, and where there's not a lot of grip on the track, and around it came. But yeah. I don't think he hit anything. I don't either. No, they were too kind of too wide inside him. He took a really wide entry into three. A little too wide. Yeah, Might just, not want to do that again. <laughs> not for a while. I'd just be worried if, if they flat spy those tires. If one is flat, it could come apart here and tear up one of the fenders. So caution after just three laps complete, but Joey Logano in command. Welcome back to Pocono. Under caution at lap five for Matt Di Benedetto's spin. He did not hit the wall. He came to the pits and got tires. No fueling allowed until after the competition caution. But Larry, it looks like a lot of drivers are trying to save some gas. Well, Jeff Gordon and I and Daryl were talking during a commercial break. One reason you always save, if you save under caution, that means less time to fill it up when you come to pit road. But I think we're going to see interesting strategy, even with the competition caution at lap 15. I would not be a bit surprised to see drivers stay out because the window opens at lap 24. If you want to pit there, 
even under green, make it on three more stops from there to the end. Larry, you sound like you're at a road course, <laughs> running the race backwards. It's a roval. It is part road course. Uh -huh. Let's right. go back to the start of the race. I counted them seven wide. Your <laughs> mileage may be different. <laughs> no, they, they were certainly <laughs> fanned we out as far land. as you could. This is one of the widest front straightaways that we have in all of NASCAR. But look at Logano <laughs> go down to block Matt Kenseth. Uh, and then you see Carl Edwards try to sneak to the middle. I really thought that the two was going to get the lead right here, and he kind of did, but it looks like he slid up, and the 22 got a big run on him and got by him. Logano Kenseth on the front row for the restart. Logano elects the outside. Harvick Keslowski, Edwards, Kurt Busch, Johnson Stewart, Hamlin Kane, the top 10. Yeah, Bob well, Logano did not my get teammate, a good start here. My, my teammate right behind me pushing me. Where's Carl going? He oh, well, he's going by the four car. He's got a push from Jimmy Johnson from behind. The four car just really did not get a good start there. No. And Harvick comes out ninth. He restarted fourth. Wow, yeah, something went bad wrong there. Third place, Kurt Busch, Matt Kenseth. Kurt Busch still going forward. He he must like his race car, and I know he likes this racetrack. He likes it a lot. And uh, Johnny Klausmeyer is a substitute in, uh, crew chief today. He's a mechanical engineer. He actually uh, is one of the guys. He was a lead race engineer. These guys know how to call a race. They sit right beside the crew chief and do the strategy. So look for that 41 to have a good day. Clint Boyer jumps inside Kyle Larson. These turns here, Mike, you play chicken with it. If you're beside somebody, you're just hoping, gonna li are you going to lift or am I going to lift? If you're going to lift, I'm going to lift. You really pack it in there. One of the moves I really like to make at this track, DW, is, is you'll run in there side by side with another driver and you'll lift early to try to get them to lift and then you accelerate again <laughs> yeah. and try to jump up in front of them. I like that. <laughs> Michael McDowell there to the outside of Danica Patrick. You know, we told you it's the longest front straightaway in NASCAR. Did we also mention it's the widest? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's remember back in the day, Neil Bonnet was the first one I saw snake this front straightaway. Everybody said, you can't do that. Now everybody does it. Brad Keselowski now settled in second behind his teammate, Joey Logano. Here's Vince. Well, Keselowski, of course, was the pole winner, but he did not like the air pressures on that original start to the race. So he went from first all the way back uh, to about fourth or fifth. He said the car was just really on the splitter until the pressures came up, didn't want to turn into one. But now that the air pressures have come up, it's a little snug in the center, a little free off, but much, much better. Yeah, you know, I've watched lap times. And that's what I kind of live with the scoring monitor, 51.62 to a 51.90. Uh, that's the 22 and the two. But that's what turn one really does to you as a driver and as a team, uh, the, the engineers. It's so tough to go in there with low pressures and not hit the splitter at the beginning of a run. As we see Clint Boyer go down to third gear. Why do they do that? They've got to slow down. This is such a long straightaway, carrying a lot of speed, 200 plus miles per hour going into turn one. They go down in there, they've got to slow down so much. They need more RPM to pull up off that corner. As you saw, he went up to fourth gear down that straightaway. He's coming up on the tunnel turn. Some downshift to third gear to maximize RPM. Some stay in fourth gear and just carry the momentum through there. Back up to fourth gear. Now he's going to go into turn three. Very flat sweeping turn three. Definitely going to go to third gear here. And then use that gear and that RPM to pull all the way down this long straightaway and back into turn uh, fourth gear. Always think about that third gear as a, like a passing gear. You, you use it to slow down a little bit getting in the corner, but then you jam that thing into third and it really gives you power up off the corner. Ninth place, Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott in 10th in his first time here in a cup car, Matt.
And Mike, it definitely has been a learning weekend for Chase Elliott. He does have some experience here in an ARCA car, but basically it's apples to oranges. And with the lack of track time this weekend, uh, the education, he really had to revert to teammates, their setups, and also watching old video. Right now, though, he says the car much freer into the corner. He attributes that to the wind going down the front straightaway. But the car is great off turn three, and that's been their biggest challenge all weekend. Casey Kane closing in on Chase Elliott. We listened in on the rookie. I like it pretty good. I think it's decent. Uh, definitely tightening up as the rubber lays down. Yeah, step four. Step four. Four laps to the competition caution. Well, this is, I think that's great news for 24 fans out there to hear him talk about how good the car is. They've struggled a little bit this weekend. And you talk about an education as a rookie, look who he's following, Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin won this race as a rookie. So <laughs> there's nobody better to follow than that guy right here as he gets a run off the whoa, tunnel turn. Levy gets Hamlin loose, loose. he's going to have him. Put that, put that front bumper up under the rear one, got him a little bit loose. Chase has a win here in the Arca Series back in 013. He was one of our 15 winners that started up front here today. And I really like to hear drivers when they, they say, I'm good off of turn three, watch that car, because that's where you want to be good is off of turn three, down that long sh front straightaway. Now, Chase never touched Denny Hamlin. No, I, I think Chase's car looks pretty good through the tunnel, and it looked like Denny just didn't get through there quite as good. He may have gotten a little bit low, got a little bit of the bump on the apron, but then when Chase got close to him, the car stepped out, got a little bit loose. Just from that air that's coming off of the 24 car, it's taking a little air off the spoiler. Yeah, a little bit of air, and then, Mike, you don't, you can't help but know somebody's behind you. You want to get back in that gas just a little bit quicker to try to get away from him. Sometimes that car will jump a little sideways with you. For the second week in a row, Joey Logano was fastest in rounds one and two of knockout qualifying. And for the second week in a row, he got beaten in the final round. Last week by Martin Truex, this week in the closing minutes by his teammate Brad Keselowski. So Logano out for a little revenge right here. Well, we saw, we saw already where Hamlin's struggling a little bit with this car. And what happens at this place is all about momentum. Such a big track. Momentum's so important. And drivers, when they see another car go by you, all of a sudden they pounce. And they, they try to put the pressure on you, keep you making mistakes, keep your momentum down. And as we see, they're about to go three wide here with Mark Truex Jr. And But they're all taking advantage, knowing the 11 car is not exactly happy with his car right now, losing some momentum. All right, we're two laps to the competition yellow. Truex started the race. 17th got up to 12th uh, in the first three laps before the DiBenedetto caution gave a spot back and now he's back at 12th right where he restarted I think what we're seeing with a number of these cars the two for instance he's now quicker than our leader uh, uh, Joey Logano and it was air pressure low air pressure on the two when they started probably low air pressure on the 78 hitting that splitter once the pressures come up they can go forward well as you know DW those pressures may cost you a little bit of time at the beginning but if, 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 as they build up, if you're a little lower than the others, you, you'll make up for it on the longer run. A lot of folks today looking at Tony Stewart. Smoke has his best start of the season, sixth. He restarted seventh. He's retaken sixth trying to get a win and make his way into the chase. Jamie. And it has been a good weekend for them. I talked to his crew chief this morning, Mike Bugarabich, and he told me they brought a brand new race car here. But other than that, they haven't done anything differently. They said Tony just loves this track. He's been good here in the past. Two wins, and their focus is on the top 30 in points. They're 60 points out coming in here. They want to get a win, and they feel like this is one of those tracks they can certainly capitalize. I love what Tony Stewart said. One of the things he's proudest of in his career is he could win in any car, in any series, on any track. That's pretty big accomplishments. I think they may have extended this caution just a, a lap or so. Nope, we're good. No? We've just completed lap 15. Oh, okay. They're going to let all the cars cycle through. Uh, I, gotcha. I was wondering. If and then they'll throw the flag. Yeah, I thought since that caution came out, maybe they were thinking about extending it. And guys, just setting the stage when we do get this competition caution. Remember, the fuel window is 32 to 36 laps. I think you will see four different agendas. I think you'll see a normal four tire stop. Put it out. I think Put you'll see out. some this right sides. I think you'll see a fuel only, but I still believe there's guys planning on doing this race on four stops. There'll be some that stay out and wait to lap 24, 25 to come make their green flag stop. Now, amazingly, when you talk about four different scenarios, Chad Knauss pops up on the screen. <laughs> he certainly is 
one of the leading innovators on pit road. It's like we always say, what's Chad going to do? That's the question. Yeah. So right now you see Joey Logano, he's just coasting. He's shut the engine off. He's saving fuel. They, these teams start thinking about saving fuel from the time they start the engine up. They'll actually shut the engine off on pit road so they don't run the, the engine too long to burn fuel. When they leave pit road, they'll start saving under the pace lap. The caution comes out, already saving fuel. Now, as we've seen, there are risks, though, to shutting that engine off while you're riding around. Yeah, there were, in the beginning when we went to the ECU unit and all that uh, technology we have now, there were some problems in, but I haven't seen anybody have that much trouble lately. But Jeff, every race, fans at home, every race is a fuel mileage race. That's you right. start saving fuel from the minute you come on and hit the racetrack. Well, every race is a strategy race. And just you know, saving fuel, four what? tires, two tires, all those things are all part of the strategy. And remember here last summer, Joey Logano led 97 laps, but he ran out of fuel with three to go, handing Matt Kenseth the victory. Looked like that was on his mind as he shut that <laughs> engine off when the caution yeah. came out. Now they have changed the entry to pit road. In response to some incidents, it has been extended. Uh, looks like not quite two, 200 feet there. Well, you can see, uh, I think from about here to here is all new. And then safer barrier all down the uh, uh, inside wall there. So they've done a really nice job of, of covering that up and protecting it. All right, the Penske Fords, Logano and Keselowski lead them into pit lane, Matt. Matt Kenseth, he has that first stall off turn three. Jason Ratcliffe told him, do not slide your tires. Larry Mack talked about that they may see some two tire stops going on, and we may see that here with the 20. He says the grip, not quite what he'd like. As you can see, two tires there for the 20 of Kenseth. Meanwhile, his teammate, the 19 of Carl Edwards, they wholesaled their setup bumper to bumper today. So not exactly sure what to expect, Vince, on this 19. Bush pitting from third. It's going to be four tire change. Joey Logano says it's just a little bit too tight into three. Brad Keselowski pitting from the number one pit box. He thought it was a little loose into three. All four tire changes. A lot of two tire changes and Ryan Newman is the big gainer in our advanced auto parts race off pit road. As Larry predicted, a lot of different strategies. Six drivers stayed out.
They will restart at the rear. Too fast. And Martin Truex made two pit stops. Look at all the sparks flying underneath the left front. Yeah, and Mike, that's under. I mean, we're going slow here. That thing is really going to drag once he uh, if, when he gets up to speed. That must be uh, something they were working on. Ready for the restart on the front row. Kyle Larson, Greg Biffle. They did not stop. Neither did Michael McDowell, Jeb Burton, Josh Wise, or Reed Sorensen. And there they go. Good grief. This is ridiculous. Boy, it's fun to watch. But I like it. Yeah. But I like it's it. It's ridiculous, but awesome. <laughs> yeah. I can't, yeah. Oh, man. I don't think I've ever seen them be quite as aggressive as I have on these early restarts. Well, it's one of those things, DW, you're trying to make position, but you also don't want to lose position, so you're blocking as well as trying to advance. Whoa, three wide headed for the tunnel. That's not good. That wouldn't work. No. That's edgy right there. I mean, you just barely got room to get one car, car across there. Now, remember, McDowell stayed out. He did not get fresh tires. That's the 95. Yeah, he's he's got them. Ty Dillon and my 95. Yeah, Ty got, Dillon's got in that car this up week. a little bit right there. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, he's falling back a little, quite a bit on this restart from where he started. So they're obviously going to play a, a fuel mileage game here on that 95. See how it works out. All six of those cars, Larson, Biffle as well. Well, Larson in the Xfinity race played this same strategy. Same strategy. It actually ended up winning him the race. Of course, it ended short because of rain. But right now, being out front, clean air is paying off. Yeah, he's running the same lap time right now as uh, Kenseth is. Kenseth 71 and uh, Larson 71. Johnson right behind him with a 90. We found out what happened to Martin Truex. Let's check with Larry. Well, we had, what, roughly 36 to 37 drivers on pit road. And when Martin Truex Jr. went to turn out of his pit road, you'll see him right there. You see Matt DiBenedetto in 83 car turning in, Truex oh, turning oh out. A lot of contact. I think it's probably knocked some bracing down, and that's what's probably dragging. Boy, that's a big oh, impact. He drove him all the way to the inside wall. I mean, that was contact on both sides. It's really important. This is where the total team effort comes in, into play. You've not only as a driver have to watch your mirror, but the spotter has to pay attention to cars coming in. Spinner, Spin. Brian Scott. That's a turn one, and he's right brought there. out Nothing the second else coming third car. Just make sure you got some uh, old pressure. Yeah, this is not the caution that Kyle Larson wanted to see right here because it, it really messes the strategy up because, as I said, his window opens up lap, about lap 24. That's probably about where we're going to go racing. Now, everyone that just pitted, I do not see them coming back to pit road. Yeah, you're right, Larry. This is absolutely backfired on him. I'm pretty sure he's going to have to come down pit road. Brian Scott said as he was downshifting, the car hung between gears. Ooh. That's not good. That sounds like what happened to Jimmy Johnson at Dover. You know, he said the car wouldn't go into gear. Similar situation. Let's watch from Danica Patrick. All clear by half to two wide, still clear by one, still up there. I don't know if it went into neutral or if it wouldn't come out of fourth gear, but there's a good chance that maybe it went into neutral, wouldn't go into turn uh, into third gear. Kind of what it sounded just, like. It looked like he just carried way more speed than he was expecting. The car went up high and eventually came around. Yeah, he made a little contact with the wall, got a little right rear damage. DW couldn't get her woed down, right? He couldn't get her woed up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this 78 car. They've got to have quite a bit of damage on that car from what we saw in our uh, on that shot in the pits. Last week, Martin Truex could do nothing wrong. This week, they're finding a hard time getting it right yeah, again this just shows you how incredible that was of what they did last week and it didn't start on at the time the green flag dropped right. it started the whole weekend qualifying on the pole you got a number one pit stall you don't have to worry about anybody coming around you at that number one pit stall and then they got off pit road perfectly every time maintained the lead and had great restarts a fast race car the complete package yeah well, remember he's the defending champion of this race Hey, let's let's talk about Kyle Larson real quick. Pit road is open. Now we've run six laps and he's been saving fuel. So he may can go as far as 28 or 29 laps. And, and in my book, what's the difference? Pitting under green a few laps after a restart or being at the back of the pack on the restart? I'd almost prefer to be in clean air and go ahead and wait and make that green flag stop. I'm with you, Larry. I'm coming on green. That's what they're going to do, Larry. They're staying out. 
Pit road is open and it has very few takers. Greg Biffle comes in. And Ty Dillon will pit as well. So does Kevin Harvick. We'll recap those stops when we come back. Plunger. Matt Kenseth, sixth and first in the two Pocono races last year. Kenseth currently running second. The Sprint Network is fastest, more reliable, with better coverage than ever. For a limited time, switch to Sprint, save 50%. They're going to add a lap to this caution. Brad Kozlowski has come down to pit road at NASCAR's request. Watch, uh, watch this you see car. the side of the car. Yeah, coming down pit road. Look, uh, look right there, that area there. You can see how it's shaded. You, and that's from a body modification where they've dented it in to try to create some more side force. Somebody accidentally fell into it, looks like. And the call is unapproved body modification. So they're going to do the tire change. You see now the NASCAR official is coming around to the right side of the car to inspect the body side. There you see it shadowed there. You can and definitely the crew's see. about to find out they're not leaving until that's fixed. NASCAR discretion as to when that car will be allowed to return to the track. Need a plunger. Well, what I like about this is watch when they when they finally give in, they actually had a tool ready to pull this out. You know, these 
pit crews have gotten so good at doing a pit stop and leaning in on that, and it does help the aerodynamics and the side force of the car, but it's also very much a judgment call by NASCAR of how much pressure they put on it. There's the tool that yep. they use. They go in there. Drill a hole and then you put a screw or something in there and you jerk that back out. I've seen body plungers do the same thing. We got a pit, 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 pit. We got a, we're being black flag here. They just black flag. It's just late on, on uh, body modification. What's the official saying there? I haven't seen no official tell me anything. Uh, they just yelled at me for it. Well, that word came down from the tower. You know, sooner or later, you'd think these guys would figure out that uh, there's a lot of cameras watching them. And it's just about any move you make these days, whether it's in the garage coming out on the track or out here on the racetrack and in the pitch. Somebody's got a camera on you all the time. So Kozlowski will restart 30. And there they are. Now, let's show you what happened on the first pit stop for the two from our Fox cameras. Watch the Jackman. Bam. He, he, he just put his shoulder in that one. Yeah, and his hip. And he's not a small guy. No. Oh. I mean, he can definitely definitely so, make a modification there if he hip checks that car. So Brad Keselowski will take the green on the racetrack and then he'll have to do a pit road pass through penalty. Wow. If you got to have something like that happen, this is the place to do it. Ready to go green. Kyle Larson, who has not yet pitted against Matt Kenseth, who got tires at lap 17. Because Mike, he'll be able to make his drive through penalty and not lose a lap, which are not many tracks that could take that, that would happen. This is one of them that can, that can work for you. And Larson prevails off of turn one. Ooh. Whoa, the 22 oh, up high. No. He came right down in front of the 31 of Ryan Newman, and I think it finally got him loose. Oh, it did. Look at the whole rear of the car is all crinkled up. Oh, yeah, there's contact for sure. It's right behind their left rear tire. You can see a lot of damage. Down there. Things not going well right now for Team Penske. He has an, that's unapproved, but uh, not illegal. All right, let's go back to the restart. Now watch right there as they restart. Logano is right behind. Newman. He's going to fan out. Oh, oh, he, oh, he oh touched yeah. him. Payback. I think that that got the attention of Ryan Newman, and he's going to do a little payback here as the 22 gets in front of him. I think you're right, and he does it uh, right about there. Bam. Excuse Bam. Me. Bam. 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 Wow. He wanted to be sure he got him. <laughs> Kyle Larson finally makes his stop. Jamie. Well, he started 21st. They played a little strategy, stayed out, led eight laps. Now they bring it in. They made a chassis adjustment. You saw it there. Wedge and four tires for the 42. Meanwhile, the two serving his penalty. The leader is heading for turn three as Brad Keselowski pulls off pit road. Well, this yeah. is going to be a lot of fun to watch to see how this strategy plays out. I, I'm very interested to see, uh, you know, how they handle the rest of the race. Are they just going to stretch it each time and do the same thing all the way to the end? Hey, guys, because of the penalty, Brad Keselowski, Paul Wolf, and the timing of it, they'll have to go to this same strategy. They'll try to make it on three more stops, just like Kyle Larson and Chad Johnson in the 42. During the caution flag period, Danica Patrick had an issue. Brake's not working. Uh, tempo on the brake. Get the pump them up, or there's not, nothing there at all. He's not slowing it down. It's not slowing yeah. the car down. So, so that right. tells me she's still going away. Oh, it's getting worse as you run. I'm going to have to tell us about one to lap two just because you're coming at a bit of a different speed, but it seems worse. Well, you have to remember, too, she's back in traffic, so there's a couple things going on. There's very little air getting to the car to, to create drag and help slow the car down, as well as, you know, this this gear and, and this package, I think they're just going to use a little bit more brake. I'm just wondering, it doesn't sound like she's having to pump the brake, so I don't think it's overheating the fluid. I think it's just the, the brake 
it just friction is just not there right now. Have you ever had a, a brake problem uh, here? I, oh. I, when I hear her say that, it frightens me because I have unfortunately have had a major brake failure here at Pocono going into turn one. And that's the results. When you have the pedal go to the floor, the rotor brakes, goes through the hood, and you have no brakes going into turn one, pretty good chance it's going to look like that afterwards. How'd you try to slow it down? Well, I, actually, yeah, I, as I went in there, the, my foot went to the floor. I saw the rotor go through the hood, and I just threw it into first gear, just trying to get something to slow it down, and it actually turned the car around, which was good for a little bit until I went through the grass, got airborne, and then I saw where I was headed to the wall of the driver's side. Man, oh you do gosh. something like that, you could blow that engine up, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was full survival mode. I know and it I'm, was. And I'm happy to be able to, 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 be able to say I survived. That's what I say. You're glad to see that in here today. Now, you saw Kevin Harvick passed Danica Patrick trying to overcome his penalties back up to 19th with that pass Casey Kane who had the same penalty for speeding on the first stop uh, just uh, just in front of him there in 18th up at seventh place Dale Earnhardt Jr. let's get a Dale Jr. performance report from Matt going old school with the setup and it is starting to pay off the car was much uh, better on that first run, but it was still tidy. So just no front grip, especially when he would try to get down to the bottom. The big wind gauge, that huge American flag. Junior says wind is a concern, upsetting the aerodynamics of the race car. He's gained one spot, currently up to seven. Just in front of Tony Stewart. Old school setup. I, I, I just think that's more compliance with the springs and the shocks. It's not all about the platform and having a real stiff suspension is, I'm guessing, you know, what they went for. Maybe they went back to one of Dale Senior's old setups. <laughs> That'd be real old school right good. there. Yeah. Joey Logano on the move, taking 15th from Clint Boyer. Let's take a look at uh, Nature's Bakery biggest movers since that restart. Obviously, Harvick and Kane, who restarted tail end with penalties. But Greg Biffle's up eight and Truex up seven. Almirola plus five. I've seen so many times here at Pocono where a penalty that costs you a lot of track position but allows you to come in, take four tires, put fuel in it late, actually can end up benefiting you in this race in the long run. Yeah, you just don't want to panic. I mean, this way this track lays out, the way you can make pit stops without losing a lap, and then uh, you got you got 160 laps around this joint. So just don't panic. Get 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 out there and get back in the groove. Whoa, we see Kurt, uh, Kyle Busch drive in deep into turn three. It's real flat over there, and you can see it wiggle and get loose on him. The Bush brothers were right together with fast laps in practice. They're right together again. Yeah, both cars running pretty good. Top five. Got uh, Carl Edwards right there running six. All hanging together. And all within four seconds of the leader. Matt Kenseth, the leader, not unexpected. Rookie Chase Elliott in second ahead of Jimmy Johnson and the Bush Brothers. You're watching Fox NASCAR.
Earlier this weekend, Clint Boyer visited the Visine fan area for 7-Eleven Slurpee. And to check out the Visine Clint Boyer virtual reality experience. Fans got a chance to see the race weekend through Clint's eyes. And you can go to youtube.com slash Visine official. Experience it all yourself. Up on the starter stand, the Visine spotter stand clear vision cam gives you this view of Pocono Raceway. Long way across to that tunnel turn from high atop the grandstand here. If you'd been looking through that camera yesterday, you would have seen a Pocono whiteout, not a winter whiteout. We were fog and mist bound and rain all day. Today, beautiful day to have a race and go 400 miles. Danica Patrick, Ricky Stenhouse, battle for 20th. I still think she's having some problems with her brakes. She had a pretty good amount of distance between her and Ricky going into turn one, and it looks like she's just being extra careful and conservative going in the corner because of those brakes. Yeah, it sounded like, Jeff, that the brakes were not so much going away as it just wasn't stopping the car like she wanted to, like maybe the pads were too hard or... I don't know, it just didn't sound like we're slowing the car down. Yeah, not enough friction there to help slow the car down. The problem that you have when, when that occurs, you're going to push on that brake pedal even harder trying to slow the car down, which could create even more heat. Yeah. Well, she's going to race 400 miles, but she's turning 600 miles worth of wheel <laughs> trying to get through the corner here. Just, uh, just saw over, I don't even like to say this, just saw over 200 miles an hour off into that corner. Definitely not uh, not a good sign if it's not improving or especially if it's getting worse. Casey Kane trying to overcome that speeding penalty. He's up to 15th, Vince. Well, the good news is, despite the speeding penalty, they really like the adjustments that they made on that first stop. So Casey likes the car he's got. It's a tough place to gain track position, especially with that speeding penalty. But as you guys said, if you're going to get a penalty, it's good to get it early. At least he likes his car at this point. Kind of been that kind of year for this five bunch. Today they got a great car, and then they get a speeding penalty. So, uh, But they got time to overcome it. But... Well, I got to pull for Casey. I picked him as our as my Can-Am ride of the week, so <laughs> you got to go. Matt? Mike Chase Elliott continues to impress. Strong run there near the top of the field, and the car much better, especially off the exit of turn three, which we mentioned earlier was one area they wanted to focus on. It's just a little bit tight rolling with the brakes, but so far, he said, the car just continues to improve. And, and this bunch, like much of Hendrick Motorsports, racing with heavy hearts today, one of the all-time great characters and an original Rainbow Warrior, Mike the Captain Belden. He passed away, and uh, all our thoughts and prayers go out to wife Karen. And Jeff, you spent many times the transporter driver and the original gas man on the 24. The captain, he was one of a kind. Oh, he certainly was. Thank you for bringing that up. And yes, uh, all of our thoughts and prayers out to the Belden family. The captain, he was a, a fixture in that 24 car back from 95 to about 2000. He always... Um, you know, joked about the 355. He was a part of that team for three championships and 55 wins. That's wow. that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, lost the fight to cancer. Yep. And Mike, we talk about the dominance of the Gibbs Toyotas this year. They won eight out of 13 races. This time last year, Chevrolet had won eight out of 13 races. Wow. So. The more things change, sometimes the more they stay the same. And today, these uh, these Hendrick cars are looking pretty racy. Let's look at the Toyota running order with Matt Kenseth, the race leader, Kyle Busch in fourth, Carl Edwards sixth, Denny Hamlin, and Martin Truex after that double pit stop, trying to work his way back up. Vince, what was all those sparks and what was all dragging on Martin's car? <laughs> a little bit of everything on the front end. You know, they took two tires on that pit stop, but on exit, as we showed the replay, he got clipped by the 83. That did right side damage, and then it knocked him into the wall on the left side, so that then did left side damage on the front. So during that second pit stop, they patched up the damage on the right front. They got the splitter up off the, uh, the ground in the left front, so they had a lot of changes to that front end of that car. He restarted 35th. He's up about 10 spots right now, but still not ideal for Martin Truex Jr. Daryl, as I've heard you say before, 
Maybe he withdrew too much at the luck bank last week. But he used it up. I know that. <laughs> that when you have a perfect week like that, your expectations were so high coming here. Defending champion, we thought he'd be the guy to beat. And boy, they have struggled all weekend long. You know what my big concern would be if I'm the 78 team, if it's dragging that left front splitter so much, it might actually grind the splitter completely off. And if, he, if that happens, they're going to lose a lot of downforce in the left front of that car. I don't see any sparks flying now, Jeff, so maybe they've got it up off the ground enough that he's going to be okay. Now let's go back to Danica Patrick's pit and an update on the brake situation for Matt. And Danica Patrick running in the 23rd position. Billy Scott, are you running something new with your brake package? Any idea what's amiss? No, we're not. Same stuff as normal, so we'll just keep trying to get a handle on it and figure out what we got going on here. Well, we know that brake fluid is hygroscopic. It absorbs water. Yep. Boy, we had a lot of water. This yeah, morning. I just wondered about that. It's Larry, and he said he didn't feel like that would be a problem because uh, the cars never really were on the line or anything. They're always in the garage. But we have seen that through the years. Rainy days, high humidity, that brake foot will uh, pick up a little moisture. What's that song? Rainy days, Mondays always get me. I'd say up today. <laughs> up. That's good. It's a sunny day. For every race day moment, there's the perfect song. Some of them are about Mondays. But for every song, there's the perfect Coke. This summer, share a Coke and a song with friends, family, and fans at Coke.com. Uh, share a Coke.com for more info. Matt Kenseth leads Chase Elliott by 3.7 seconds. Pretty steady gap to Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, the top five. At 47 laps complete, 113 to go. You know, most of our leaders pitted at lap 17. So if you do the fuel window of 34 to 36 laps, they can go somewhere to about lap 51 or 52. And because they can do that, 
that may kill Kyle Larson's strategy because if everybody pits somewhere around lap 52, they can make it on two more stops. Yeah, Kyle Larson could go to 58 or 60, but he still would have to make two more stops. So if this thing stays green, cautions can change it. It may have killed the strategy with what went on right there. Yeah, I think, Larry, you know, if we go green, the only thing that might help him is he might be on a little bit fresher tires on a restart or something late in this race that might give him just a little bit extra grip as we go four and five and seven wide down into yeah. turn one. Larson's currently 34th. So pit stops will be coming before too long. Let's look ahead, Matt. And Jason Ratcliffe working up what adjustments they'll make to that 20 car the next time he hits pit road. And Matt Kenseth saying the car over the past three or four laps, Jamie Little has started to really free up. And the 48 on the one and only practice session on Saturday, they tried some different things, found a setup they liked, and it's working. Started seventh today, up to third. He's saying he's pretty consistent in all three quarters, a little free in and snug off all three. Vince? Well, the 41 of Kurt Busch currently running sixth. Kurt said he really looked this week at his in-laps. He wants to look at the data, wants to improve his in-laps. He thinks that'll make their pit stops faster overall. So he worked on that. We'll see if he's any better on that this time when he comes. He says the car is pretty good, getting a little looser on entry. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. He should be pitting within the next four laps. Yeah, one of the, one of the fastest cars on the racetrack and making up some time. And you can see here is the four car of Kevin Harvick. He's running faster laps than our leaders right now. And really moving back up through the field nicely. Had to overcome a speeding penalty. As did Casey Kane. Harvick now ninth. Kane is 14th. Cars fast, really fast. Fast with a little bit fresher tires than some of those guys up front. So if, if this thing goes green, that'll certainly work well for this team. What always impresses me about the four car, Kevin Harvick, when he gets the car turned where, where he wants it, he gets in a throttle and he never lifts. He comes off the corner harder and better than most anybody I watch. And it's a consistent thing he does in a lot of tracks, DW. He does it very well here. We see him to turn one, he seems to downshift a little bit sooner, but over in turn three, in practice especially, we saw he shifts and goes to the throttle at the exact time, but when he does, he goes to it all the way to the floor yeah. and it really accelerates off the corner which is unique to anybody else I've seen do it and it works obviously very well for this past champion over the tunnel let's listen in here as he goes into three and hear how he does it this car might affect how he goes about it he backed off early yeah he backed off early he's going to try to get a run on that car and pit stops begin yeah that's Dale Jr. right in front of him I think he, he decided to check up a little early yeah. and see if he could get a big run down the straightaway yeah Kyle Busch on pit road here the 18 car and he'll be the first of the leaders to pit boy he hit his mark said that thing right through the jack he's pitted toward pit wall uh, I thought they might do right sides but they're going for got to gas it up might as well <laughs> Kevin Harvick takes over seventh. Cars on the move, boys. As Kyle Busch and Jeb Burton exit the pits, Martin Truex is in. We thought Truex might be missing a little bit of that splitter after uh, all the grinding. <laughs> ought to be losing, they ought to be missing all of it as low as that thing is. Jimmy Johnson in, David Reagan in as well. And here comes Dale Jr. to pit road. Impossible to mix, miss that exalted Chevrolet of Dale Jr. Boy, is that thing bright? It stands out. Like that paint job, one of yeah. the best they've had this year. Ryan Blaney, Clint Boyer in two. All scheduled stops at lap 52. And let's listen in on Carl Edwards. The switch. These guys are getting really good fuel mileage. They're really bad. I can't tell, but we can't do it from here. Really good or really bad? I, I, didn't, know, I didn't know exactly what to read into that. <laughs> Chase Elliott's in. So is Kurt Busch. Well, it, I wonder if Carl had asked, "Can we? Should we put now? Can we pit now?" Yeah. 
can't go from here. But I so. didn't hear an affirmative either way. You got no. you're either getting really good or you're really getting really bad. I'm not sure which one. Hamlin, Almarola, and Newman to the pits. Yeah, I, I think he's questioning. They're coming in to put fresher tires on the car, and he's thinking, well, we can't put tires on right now because we're not going to be able to be in our pit window for fuel. And leader Matt Kenseth is due this lap. Carry a lot of speed, man. Right, buddy, we'll track. Here. there you go. Nice and smooth. To there. Having that first pit, I think that's an advantage today. And Carl Edwards is going to come with him. So is Regan Smith. And Tony Stewart. That Jackman stumbled a little bit. Now Kevin Harvick will cycle to the lead with these stops. AJ Allmendinger in. Well, and that's what I was wondering is by taking four tires and coming in a little bit later, they have a little bit more fuel in the four car so he can stretch a little further than those that took two tires on that last stop. Yeah, Kevin can go fuel mileage wise. He can go to about lap 59 or 60, about five, six, seven laps from now. Ricky Stenhouse, Austin Dillon, Danica Patrick. And Larry, his, stops. his lap times, the lap times are really, really good right now. He's been very consistent and pretty quick. Kevin Harvey. Yeah, we've been watching lap times. They, they seem to fall off about a second over maybe eight, nine laps, and then they plateau and stay pretty consistent throughout a run. So that's definitely going to play out when we think about tire strategy and, and, and how much grip is going to be in these tires over a long run. Jamie McMurray pits from second place. Casey Kane from third. Paul Menard from fourth. And that will leave Joey Logano, Trevor Bain, and Casey Mears out on the track. Stretching, oh, here's Bain. And Greg Biffle. There's McMurray's stop on your right. Larry, by Kevin Harvick staying out uh, along with Ty Dillon, they've got those six laps to play with that they were in the pit later than the others on the last stop how much they're giving up lap time the longer they stay out what's to gain yeah they everybody's still going to have to make two more stops you know the only thing they're doing is going a little further which will give them a little fuel at the end should we go into overtime but no matter what the ones that just pitted the ones still needing to come to pit road will be two more stops if we stay green the rest of the way 56 complete. Kevin Harvick, your leader. Chevy Silverado is built with high strength steel for high strength dependability. Silverado, an official vehicle of NASCAR. Interesting day for Harvick. Uh, that you see the speeding penalty there at lap 17. And then all the way to the top, aided by some of the leaders making pit stops ahead of him. Yeah, his lap times are about one second slower right now than the guys that just stopped and got tires. So he's losing a second a lap to uh, the guys that got four, just pitted for tires. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, DW. These laps are crucial. It's important for him to put down the best possible laps that he can so that he loses the least amount to those that have fresher tires. So when he comes back out, he's going to be able to make it up with those newer, fresher, more grippy tires. Yeah, Joey Logano's on pit road. And of course, they got a little bit of damage on that left side, but it, I'm not sure how much is hurting him. It didn't seem to be hurting him that much. There's the damage you see from the 31 car kind of hammered on him. It's like see, uh, more than I thought because you can that see the corner to bend in right there. Heavy was, damage. I don't know if it's affecting the downforce too much, but it should be affecting the drag and the speed down the straightaways. And there's nothing we can do about it up under green. You got to get in and get out. Kick yeah. it. <laughs> there you go. Kick it. You saw that right uh, on the screen on the left where that's newer tires on Clint Boyer as he passed our leader. Kevin Harvick, that just goes to show you what kind of grip and speed are in those tires when they're a little bit fresh. Oh, sorry, Newman. Yeah, Harvick's got to be coming here pretty quick, guys. He's giving up a lot of speed now. So the only drivers that have not stopped in this cycle are Harvick, Michael Annette, and Josh Wines. Two car on pit road. Here comes the uh, Kozlowski. And he had climbed to fifth in the uh, pit cycle. Of course, now he'll go backwards, making the screen flag stop. Yeah, here comes the 42. Larson. 
and Michael Annette is in. So it's just Harv. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's getting kind of critical. Ball here. Yellow's out. And the yellow comes out. Bobby. Now, for now, Matt DiBenedetto. Boy, this really hurts Harvick. It does. I mean, that doesn't work for him at all. Because now he's going to be behind all the cars that just pitted. But I think this could really help those that are on pit road, like Kyle Larson. Especially he's going to help out those that have already pitted and took four tires. Yeah, they got their tires. They're good to go. They've only run a couple laps. What will happen with the, the cars that were on pit road that just pitted took four tires. Now that the caution's out, Harvick hadn't pitted yet. So he's got to come to pit road. That will cycle everybody that's been on pit road in the last couple laps right to the front. He'll be behind all those cars. Clint Boyer will get the free pass on this, the fourth caution of the day. Larry, I don't believe anybody really ran enough laps to from their flat from their green flag stop here that it would be advantageous to come back down and top up with fuel to you No, Daryl because the next window opens up somewhere around 88 to 92 so yeah with this many cars on the lead lap if you're back there at the back and you need more adjustments go ahead and make the adjustments tires fill it up with fuel but the guys up at the front absolutely other than Harvick that has to pit nothing gain so you have Kyle Busch on eight lap tires, uh, Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Blaney, and of course, Boyer, we got the free pass, and Dale Jr. with seven lap tires coming to this caution. Yeah, Keselowski, uh, Joey Logano, several guys were coming up, they just come to pit road just before that caution. So uh, they have hardly any, maybe a couple laps yeah, on theirs. It's really just Harvick. You know, he was the last one to come in and pit, trying to stretch the fuel mileage, and that's, that's the one that's gonna hurt the most here. A lot of lapped cars behind Kevin Harvick, so when he pits, expect a bunch of those to move up for the wave around. A whole bunch, yes. I'm telling you. <laughs> About to have to feel. Well, let's have a look at today's Ford Performance track facts. In 1985, Bill Elliott swept both races here from the pole. And this weekend, Team Penske is the second team in the history of this track back to 1974 to sweep the Pocono front row. That's your Ford performance track facts. Mike, that, that year, 85, Bill Elliott, and that car he had, we just figured I'll run a second. That, that car can be seen in the Henry Ford Museum when we go to Michigan next week. But I got I to gotta go over and visit that thing one more time. I saw the rear of it a lot. You know, last week was Memorial Day, and thanks to all of you for your comments about our efforts to honor those who sacrificed uh, for our country. Uh, another story that comes out of that weekend, yeah, NASCAR North, the Ken Squire started, some of the great heroes, and one of the greatest was Dynamite Dave Dion from Hudson, New Hampshire. Yep. Dion went prospecting for crewmen in an unlikely place, the jungles of Vietnam. Yep. Matt Yoakum has the story. Mike, no one sets a better example of sacrifice, dedication, and patriotism than Stuart Haas Racing's Ray Shorty Beauchene. In 68, Ray volunteered to transfer to Vietnam from Germany to help keep his brother Timothy in the States for the birth of Tim's first child. Ray was an E5 specialist, the engineers, going in to help clear jungle for airstrips and roads. It was a daily occurrence being shot at or fighting off the enemy from jumping on the running boards of his trucks. While in country, as you mentioned, he had a chance meeting with Dave Dion and that changed his life. Shorty moved south eventually. For the next 46 years, he spent his passion in racing. This coming Friday, Shorty retires from racing. He's a racer, a survivor, a Vietnam veteran that beat cancer from Agent Orange. Great sacrifice and dedication, but everyone in the garage area, they're just honored to call Shorty a pal. Happy retirement, Shorty. Thanks, Matt. Great story. Yeah, don't forget today's D-Day. Uh, thinking of another Shorty, Shorty Colley, uh, Van Colley's dad, he was with the 101st Airborne and uh, was in, involved in the uh, in the Normandy invasion. I raced with Dave Dion early in my Bush Grand National uh, days up in 
the Northeast. Yep, quite a great competitor. Oh my gosh, I can remember him, remember him driving right by me down the straight. Yeah. We had some horsepower. Yeah, we had the V6s, he had the V8. It was a lot of fun racing. He, he uh, spends a lot of time in Daytona Beach now, helping out with the Living Legends of Auto Racing group. Yeah, I went up there right, to race a few times for Ken, and I went up there looking for beavers and got run over by a dragon a number of times. All right, they were brothers, <laughs> Bobby Dragon and Harmon Dragon, whose nickname was Beaver. And yes, they were both champions. They were. <laughs> we had a lot of fun up that there. That series Did had great nicknames. The Tampa Tornado, Robbie Crouch. I love that. The Mad Monk of Montreal, Claude Oban. Exactly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what the heck happened? <laughs> There's a look uh, from our Visine spotter stand clear vision cam. 61 laps complete, 99 to go. And Matt Benedetto's car has been removed from where he crashed at turn number one. Matt climbed out. He was OK. Uh, they're going to haul that car back to the garage. So, uh, Larry, it looks like the four is, uh, is it the pit road open. Uh, it's looks about like to open up this time. Four's going to come this time. And you know, guys, I heard some crew chiefs tell their drivers they were borderline on making it. We may see, especially some drivers back in the pack, come in and do fuel only just to build that insurance. But to Mike's point, we're going to have a ton of wave arounds, including Kyle Larson in that 42 car. Yeah, there are 18 cars one lap down, hoping to get that lap back here. Vince? Well, a bad break for Kevin Harvick earlier when he was uh, caught speeding on pit lane, and then a bad break here. They were just getting ready to pit when that yellow came out, so Harvick uh, very frustrated with the way that played out. He says the car is loose, but even though it's loose, it's still tight in the center, so they're going to take a wedge out, a round out of the left rear. Four tires for Kevin Harvick, trying to get that four machine to turn a little better and maybe make up some ground here. Denny Hamlin, among others, Casey Kane, Joey Logano, making stops here. I think they're working on that damage to the right uh, left rear of that car. That uh, that's probably been hindering him a little bit. That'll get that repaired. That might help him. You're not going to hit Newman with an unapproved body modification for that, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, that's good. I'm not going to hit Newman with anything. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you don't want to do that, as Joey Logano found out. We're under caution at Pocono.
Welcome back to Pocono where Hendrick Motorsports has won five of the last seven races. Chase Elliott in second is their highest placed driver right now. For a limited time, switch to Sprint, save 50% on most Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile rates. Go to Sprint.com slash network. Now coming up next, right after the Sprint Cup race here on FS1, high horsepower action continues. The NHRA rained out yesterday in New Hampshire. You'll see the New England Nationals at 3 p.m. Eastern only on FS1. Friday at Epping, New Hampshire, watch the, the far lane. A huge explosion. The engine goes rocking back and forth and almost comes right out of the chassis of fast Jack Beckman. However, Beckman escapes without injury and he's in the finals. Amazing. Today at three o'clock on FS1. Incredible video right there to see. And a, a true explosion, those engines are making, what are they making, like five, 6,000 horsepower? Oh, no, More than seven, 8,000. Oh my gosh, yeah. crazy how it's evolved. Hey look, there's awesome Bill. Up on the hauler. Not, not a bad thing, you know, Chase Ely goes into that 24 car that has some good experience here. And you've got your dad, Bill Ely, who's won here a bunch of times to fall back on. Let's listen in on Carl Edwards running fifth. How about to the left? Just bump your wheel to the left just a little bit, help him out. Yeah, anything for Clay. You and that Clay guy, you're awful tight. I'm getting jealous here. See him, he's probably taking a nap somewhere. <laughs> yeah, when you get old, you know, the, it's important to get enough rest. <laughs> Love it when you're having fun yep. with your crew. Trying to help his front tire changer. Yeah, well, you know, I think they had an issue with that over Charlotte on one stop where the t yep. wheel was turned a little bit to the left. We got that tape on the wheel to line your tires up, and every now and we get that off a little bit. Teammates Four. versus teammates here on this restart. 14 drivers took the wave around to get back on the lead lap. Matt Kenseth with Kyle Busch, and they're going to fan out three and four wide. Chase Elliott to block. Circle gets the square. Here they go to turn one. Unfortunately, it was three against two with Carl Edwards going to take advantage and go to the inside of Jimmy Johnson. Whoa, but he slides up Yikes. the racetrack. Good Hang on, brother. Stick. Look at this. Pass for the lead by Chase Elliott. Awesome move. Yeah, he got the run, man, and he, uh, he made, took advantage of it. Good job. Left the Gibbs cars fighting side by side for second. How impressive has this rookie been this year? I'll tell you what I love about him, Jeff, is he, he didn't really take a lot of chances. That was a nice, clean pass. He got the lead. He doesn't take a lot of chances. Well, he, he takes chances when it when it's worth taking chances. That's what I like. He's thinking about those and when to do it and when not to do it. And he's driving away. How, how in the world is Harvick already up to the 19? The 19 was passing for what third place on the restart. Here's what happened. Yeah, something happened there, Carl. Which turn? I guess something, uh, something happened. I, I know what happened. He got on the splitter. Exactly. I, I, I tell you, this place is the worst for going down into turn one hard, especially if you drive in there as deep as he did, trying to pass uh, a couple of those cars like Jimmy Johnson. He got on the splitter and the, lost the nose. And how about Kyle Busch, currently second, Jamie? One of two remaining tracks he's never won at, and today has gone so far so good on that last stop. He said he was getting loose. So Adam Stevens, his crew chief, added wedge, put four tires on it. Now Kyle's saying definitely better entry. Actually, everything is better. He's in second. I might just real quickly, when we talk about it gets on the splitter, the, 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 the splitter is on the track. That takes the, the tires are basically off the ground. And they're not off the ground, but they don't have a lot of pressure on them at that point. That's why the car won't turn. Yeah, instead of it creating downforce, it's like riding on a skid plate. Yeah, it just, it, it just holds the tires up. And, and it's hard to see. It's minor, but that keeps your car from turning. You know Kyle Busch is highly motivated to win this race. He's already checked off two this year on his list of tracks he'd never won at before. Didn't get it last week at, at Charlotte, one of the other tracks, but boy, here he is in a great position to possibly get that third check mark this year. 
And how about Kyle Larson? He's up 10 spots since the restart. But Larry, is Larson now in sync with everybody else as far as pit stops? They really are. Everyone's going to have to make two stops. And Mike, the way I see it, in about 20 laps, we're at lap 68 right now, somewhere between lap 88 and 92, that window opens for everyone to pit and then make it on one more stop to the end. Joey Logano just in front of him, the outside pole sitter, 19th. Twice a rookie has won at Pocono. Denny Hamlin, both times. Right. <laughs> he swept his rookie season. This That's is right. such a tough, challenging racetrack. That's why you never see that and how rare that was and impressive of Denny Hamlin to win. Both swept both races in his rookie season, which is incredible to me. This is not a track that bodes well for rookies because of the steep learning curve. But, you know, we talk about what a great driver this young man is, and we know he is. But can you imagine stepping out, stepping into the car that this guy beside me just stepped out of? I mean, what a golden opportunity. And what I love about Chase is he's taking advantage of it. He's not throwing it away. He's capitalizing on what he has here to work with. And don't forget, he's won here. He came to run the ARCA race to get him some experience. Frankly, he brought a gun to a knife fight. He had yep. a spectacular car, gave it his all, won the race. 2013, he, he did just that. Matt? And Mike, when I spoke with Chase Elliott, he said one of the biggest learning tools that he used for coming to Pocono for the Sprint Cup car was actually talking to teammate Jimmy Johnson, but also watching a lot of in-car video, especially some of Jeff's old in-car video. He said, I gained so much knowledge there. And by the way, he's making his 19th Sprint Cup start. 16 different winners have gone to victory lane for owner Rick Hendrick, but only one of those scored their first in Hendrick equipment right here at Pocono. One of the most colorful drivers ever, the late Tim Richmond. He did it 30 years ago, Wednesday. Vince? Currently running fifth is Kurt Busch on that recent restart. He had a little contact with the 19. Kurt was concerned about some damage, but the spotter took a good look at it, said, no, I think you're all right. So right now, the only issue, Kurt says, is a little tight off three, but that 41's rolling free today. Eighth place, Edwards McMurray. Watch the 19, drives in deep to the bottom of the track, but it just doesn't stick. And you see the 41's on the outside of him. He's gonna drift up, make a little bit of slight contact with the 41 of Kurt Busch. So you see Dale Earnhardt Jr. make an evasive yeah. move, great move down to the bottom to keep the momentum going. Yeah, Johnson, Jimmy off 48 and the 88 both just went right by. But is the 19 damaged? Yeah, how's my right front fender we touch? It's all in front of the tire. Nothing on top of the fender or anything. It's all in front. The one o'clock on down. Okay, that'll pop out pretty quick. It is far away from the tire up there. It'll be fine. Yeah, there's there's two things happening there. Carl Edwards wants to make sure he doesn't have a tire rub and that he doesn't need to come to pit road to fix it. And the other thing is he wants to know if his car is tight, is it because the fender's knocked in? If the car's loose, is it, is it pulled out? He wants to know so that they can make that adjustment on the uh, next pit stop if he needs an adjustment from the team or whether he needs him to pull out that front fender. Yeah, well, and the other thing, the other thing, Jeff, you can see the damage on the fender right there. I just want to be sure it's not rubbing on that tire when I dive off into the turn down here at 200 plus miles an hour. That's what I'd be worried about. Certainly the first thing that would, that would be, be the first mind. thing in my mind. And, and there's only one other thing as bad as losing your brakes into turn one at this racetrack at Pocono, and that'd be blowing a right front tire. Amen. Amen. Chase Elliott's in his 19th start. His Hall of Fame dad won his first race in his 116th Winston Cup start.
Five laps to halfway. Here's how the Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring. Tony Stewart had his best start of the season. Sixth, currently 10th. Ryan Newman, 14th. Denny Hamlin, 15th. Joey Logano, 18th. They are all on the lead lap, as is Austin Dillon and Danica Patrick. Yeah, Tony's having a pretty darn good day. Starting the top 10, is in the top 10 now. Car's pretty solid. Long way to go. We're just coming up on halfway. Who knows what might happen? Stewart's 10 seconds off the lead. Kyle Busch made a lot of inroads into Chase Elliott's lead, knocked it down to half a second. But the last two laps, Chase has picked it up. Yeah, well, I think Kyle caught him, and then this is a, a, a pretty much a one group racetrack except for on those crazy restarts. And so when you catch somebody, it's really hard to find clean air to the outside or inside. And I think as, as Kyle caught him, he started getting into that wake. As well as the 24 cars, really good turn three, which is a great place to be good. And he seemed, even though the 18 closes up on him, look at two, Whoa. Keselowski, three wide. Whoa, watch out, it can get it loose Yikes. down there. And it, yeah, really tough to pass, but that's why you want to take advantage of two cars running side by side. That's what Keselowski tried to do. But you also have to know who you're going up against, like Kyle Larson. He's not going to lift. He's going to run the high side. Oh, he, it, it, having him, uh, Kyle Larson on the outside doesn't bother him a bit. <laughs> it was, that's uh, his wheelhouse. It oh, was yeah. Paul Menard who used a lot of discretion there. He certainly did. Yeah. Now, this is the one that they all have to be thinking about, and that's Kevin Harvick. Man, he's laying down some fast he laps. Is, he's got yeah. a little bit fresher tires than those that he's racing, like Jimmy Johnson here ahead of him. He's got a couple of tents on the field right now. He was running that good before we had that Look caution. at this car get off that tunnel turn. Watch him on I mean, He really carries good speed. He'll probably poke his nose down in here and see if Jimmy wants to battle him on this. Jimmy, no, give, him some give him some room. Yeah, gave him plenty of room. He'll hook that yellow line, jump back in the throttle. Clear all around. See ya. So you've got a rookie leading, and behind him you have five former Sprint Cup champions. Oh, that's all, all. in a row. <laughs> oh, is that all? I'd say that's pretty good company. I'd Absolutely. So. Including the defending champion, just four tenths of a second from your bumper. And Matt Ken's a third, right where he qualified. Matt's led 31 laps here today, and I believe that's the most in his career at Pocono. You know, Kyle is gaining a teeny bit. Here we see him closing that gap on the 24 car. I guess, Mike, it'd be fair to say that M&M's, this is a home track, a home race for them, right? They made over in New Jersey, right. not far from here. So Kyle really gains a little bit off the one, but really gains through that tunnel turn. And then you can see that gap opens up just a little bit as they come through turn three. But you saw the 18 of Kyle Busch searching for some clean air. He went to the high line. He knows he's got to find a little something down in turn three because he's, he has the car that can pass Chase Elliott on the rest of the racetrack. He got to within a quarter of the second at the tunnel, and then it's back to four tenths. Now here's Ryan Blaney battling Jamie McMurray for 11. And here's Blaney and crew. You see what he's talking <laughs> about. He was right on the back of Jamie McMurray coming off the corner, but when he pulled out, he just stalled. Vince? Yeah, frustrating for sure for Ryan Blaney, just way too tight, as you see, currently running 12th there behind McMurray. So there, Jeremy Bullens, the crew chief, said, we'll pit early to get you fixed up to try to keep you moving forward. Ryan Blaney tweeted a great picture this weekend at a driver introduction where his dad, Dave, introduced him at age eight to Muhammad Ali. Oh, wow. Wonderful. That was great. Time to start doing the math. Chase Elliott last on pit road. 27 laps ago. Kyle Busch has 29 laps on his tires. Remember, Kyle ran out of gas leading here last August on the last lap of the race.
Just past halfway at Pocono, we wondered what would happen to Chase Elliott when one of those Gibbs cars came up to challenge. Kyle Busch got right to his door. Matt Kenseth looked in, and Elliott held them off, dropped to the bottom. They're going to try to make him the thread through the needle. That's not going to work because he goes up high. Leaves a lane open for Matt Kenseth, but then drives off the corner and drives away. It's time for our Fox NASCAR mid-race report as the Gibbs cars battle to get past. Uh, Jeff, I don't have to even ask who you're taking. <laughs> no, you don't, Mike. Of course I'm going with Chase Elliott. I mean, he's fending off the best in the business out there. Eight uh, drivers have gotten their very first Sprint Cup victory with uh, Hendrick Motorsports. Look for Chase Elliott to fend them off and do what most of us think is impossible to do at this tricky triangle, but I think Chase Elliott might just get his first victory here today. Jeff Kyle Busch loves to check boxes. One of the boxes he's not checked yet is a win at Pocono in the Sprint Cup Series. He would be down to only one track if he could win here today. That would be Charlotte. But now you're looking at the end of the race. Two more trips to pit road should we stay green, DW. Hey, Larry, my guy ran second last week. My guy ran second 47 times in his career. He's run second here at Pocono a couple of times. But today, number four will be number one. And Matt Kenseth making his way to his pit box, looked for a crew member to grab some tape off the front of the grill. He said the brakes starting to get a little soft, heating up. Other than that, that 20 car looks good for a second straight Pocono win. I'm holding out hope for Tony Stewart. His 2009 win here was the first ever for Stewart Haas. It was Tony's second win at Pocono. He's had his best qualifying run of the season on pit road right now under green. Can smoke, get it done. Jimmy Johnson fires off from his pit box. Pit Road's a busy place at lap 86, just past halfway. Paul Menard pitted with a flat tire. The uh, left, he had a flat left side tire. He was 20th before pitting, and here comes the leader, Chase Elliott. Matt? Nice, easy entry. Look for a chassis adjustment here on the 24, trying to keep up with the race car. Now, earlier, he was adjusting with the track bar adjuster inside the race car, just trying to get a little more free into that 24. Vince? The 41 of Kurt Busch coming in. Kurt says that the track feels like it's freeing up, so they're going to snug him up a little bit with this pit stop. Debris. Caution. Caution. Debris in turn two. Will put us under the fifth caution of the day. Jamie? And Kyle Busch told us, save, save, save. We're just on the edge of our window. And Kyle had already reported two laps ago there was a hose on the back straight. So they were prepared for the caution. Meanwhile, going back to the battle for the lead between the 24 and 18, Kyle not happy, saying, you tell the 24, I'll remember that. And then he reported his car got loose when he was on the door. But otherwise, the 18 is good. Fifth caution of the day for that piece of debris in two. And looking to see who has not yet made a green flag pit stop under this cycle. Kyle Busch, Ricky Stenhouse, Danica Patrick, Landon Castle. Yeah, this is a, like we had a little bit earlier when a green flag or when a caution comes out during these green flag stops. It works to some advantages, some advantage and others not so much. Must have been more than a tire issue for Paul Menard. They're pushing his car to the garage where he will join Matt DiBenedetto and Brian Scott. He had a tire down on the left front. It could have knocked a hose off, an uh, oil line off or something. I'm not sure what happened here, but they definitely go into the garage. At the time of caution, you'll see the flashing light at right. the back. Right back there, I think. That's the pit road. Yep, there's your... There's your light for the caution closing pit road number of cars already making that entry. And they would have been past the commit line. Uh, it looks from our view there. Well, I, I think this is perfect for the 24. I mean the, you, they were in the box when the caution comes out all they have to do is make it to the start finish exactly. line beat the leader of start finish line. I mean this we've talked about the perfect storm happening. It's just happened for them. Yeah. 
Larry's burning up his calculator now with 88 laps, or rather 72 laps to go. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the ones that made the green flag stop, but especially those pitting now, I think it's a one-stop race from here on out. But, yeah, that was a perfect storm for several drivers that made their stop on the green and then got off pit road in front of the leader. Yep. I all right, Kyle Busch is going to lead them in. One of those cars that did not yet stop under green. Kevin Harvick coming with him, Casey Kane and more. Jamie. Well, it was a wedge adjustment for the 18 last stop, and he said his car got much, much better. Really no complaints other than when he was side-by-side -side with the 24. They took four tires last time, two on the first stop. It'll be an audible here. The team's been good today. Adam Stevens with the call. Right side's here. No chassis adjustments. They will take four, Vince. Casey Kane, upper right-hand port portion of your screen, says it's just getting tighter as they run. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment, chassis adjustment as well on the five. Kevin Harvick gets a chassis adjustment, also tighter as he goes, whereas Brad Keselowski says it's just losing overall grip in turn three. They made an air pressure adjustment on the two. Now, pit road gets crowded there because with all the caution flags and wave arounds, we have 34 cars on the lead lap. There's your advanced auto parts race off pit road. Caution out for the fifth time today with 71 laps to go in Pocono. Seventy laps to go in Pocono. There's Hall of Famer Bill Elliott with five wins on the Tricky Triangle, second most all time. His son, the rookie point leader Chase Elliott, leading this race. The Sprint Network, fastest, more reliable, with better coverage than ever. Call Arrow. We could hurt them. They gain on us the other two corners, and then 
if they get close, you know, and it hurts, it's hard to gain down there. Just want you to know where those strong points are. Just remember, late in the race, if you got to get out of your comfort zone in a line to slow them down, that's what we got to do. I love it. Spotter Eddie Don. <laughs> yeah, Eddie, long time Pretty spotter good, for me as well. <laughs> doing a great job giving the rookie some great information. Chase is doing an awesome job on track. Um, you know, with this race car and this tricky racetrack and battling some incredible veterans out there also. You saw Bill Elliott on top of the truck over here. Chase is dead. That's as nervous as you'll ever see him. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <Yep>. That's it. <laughs> He's water. a cool cat. Notice he's not wearing a headset. He's no, he not in contact with that. his son. Here's a nationwide Dale Jr. performance update from Matt. And Chase Elliott's teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's back in the fifth position. His car better, but still too tight through the center of all three corners. And when we come to different places, spotters have different responsibilities. TJ Majors, junior spotter, puts it on himself to go back and review old races, looking at trends that he sees. Also, the traits of different drivers, especially here at Pocono, as far as how they approach all three corners. It's just a little extra that these guys have to do is the how you define success. And I said, well, what about the guy that used to drive that 24 car? He said, man, he was so consistent and impressive. It didn't matter where he was in the field. He found his way to the front, especially here. <laughs> uh, you know, to me, the details in which the engineers, the pit crew members, the drivers are having to pay attention to, why not? Why wouldn't the spotters have to go through those same steps and all those details to be the best they can be as well? You don't just show up on Sunday. You work seven days a week. That's right. Every week. 14 drivers took the wave around. Ryan Blaney got the free pass. So we'll have 34 lead lap cars to take the green with 69 to go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here we go. Boy, you're looking to the inside. Whoa, oh, contact. Oh, oh. Ryan Blaney. Casey Mears. Casey Mears, yeah. Three wide. Oh, no, Stewart. Oh, no. Oh, no. Good grief. Danica Tony Patrick Stewart hard Stewart. in the wall off Danica oh. Patrick, perhaps. Who else got in there? Oh, man. These restarts. I mean, you got to say, sooner or later, you're going to have one of these incidences like this. And that's a shame. Now we're told Tony Stewart gets loose in front of Danica Patrick, who could not avoid her boss. Let's see what happens here, guys. You can see Tony's in a vulnerable position right in the middle. Then Larson gets his outside. Here's 17 to the inside. He gets loose right there. Oh, man. I mean, he was going to touch the wall. He was probably going to touch the wall slightly, but keep it going straight. Danica had nowhere to go. They make contact. Ricky Stenhouse down to the inside, then Al Marola, but don't think there was any contact. Yeah, I don't either. No, I don't think there was any contact. I, I think if Danica hadn't been there, Tony might have been able to save it, but she couldn't. That, that was her line. She was yeah. coming off the corner racing. It wasn't like she did anything wrong. It's just that if he, she hadn't have been there, he might have been able to save that thing. Well, I hate that for Stewart for two reasons. One, this was one of the tracks where they had a good chance to win to try to get him in the chase. Two, he's got to try to get to the top 30 in points to even have a chance to make the chase. And so far, there are only three cars out of the race. Uh, Tony's already out of the car into the ambulance. Yeah, we've seen this a little bit more than I know Tony would like to. We saw this at Dover. Uh, Tony got involved in a wreck there, and now we see this again today. And the points, like you said, Mike, is critical. Uh, you got to get that done first. See Landon Castle in the 38 car also involved. Just these, these guys just had nowhere to go. I mean, when they started the, when the chain reaction deal and no place to hide. Yeah, he ended up getting turned up and into the right, uh, the wall with the right front. Heavy left front damage here on the 10 of Danica yeah. Patrick. That's, that's where Tony and her made pretty serious contact. They're gonna have to do a lot of work on that left front. See them with the Sawzall out there cutting some of it away. Aerodynamics so important here, but wow, we've seen these pit crew members do some amazing things fixing aerodynamics. Well, I think about Austin Dillon at that Talladega. His car was a roll of tape and he finished third. Watch down here on the inside after the cars go down low to avoid the incident between the 14 and the 10. Watch them go through either a bump or Whoa, the grass. Yeah. 
That's Keselowski back yeah. there jumping around. There's Look at a, that. Look how rough that apron smoly. is. Well, there's at least a big frost heave down there. Wow. And I saw what happened to Landon Castle. As Danica came off the wall, she caught the rear of Castle's car and turned him to the right and straight up into the wall. Uh, yeah. What did you, but did you see that two car down on that apron? Well, they used to have this over the tunnel and it's still there over the, the on the uh, apron part of the racetrack. Well, well, now we're seeing on the apron, even on the straightaway, it's wow. pretty rough over there. Oh, here's a shot of it. What's your white car back there? Coming down, down. Bam, 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 bam. Sixty-five laps to go at Pocono in the Exalta We Paint Winners 400. Let's go back to the last restart. There's Clint Boyer. Green light is on. Pass the start, finish line, and here I go. Look at that. I mean, that's uh, that's what you call momentum right there. You know. I, it sounds to me, listening to the throttle, that he was catching up to the field, but you could also tell he played 
that one to his advantage to get that big run. Hey, there's Stewart there's getting the wreck. Loose. Watch this Watch going this. on the apron, how rough it is. Bam! I cannot believe how these cars, I mean, they were they were bucking around. He's like lucky a, he didn't wreck by being down there in the apron the way that car bottomed out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but Boyer hit that perfect. The green light was on, and he didn't pass anybody who got the start-finish line. He didn't change lanes, so he did all right. It just worked to his advantage. Stewart and Patrick continue with damage. Working on Landon Castle. And let's go back to the restart. Joey Logano's 22, and watch the blue 31 center of your screen, Ryan Newman. Logano loosens Newman up. Yeah, he just mistimed it a little bit, touched his left rear bumper. Probably didn't make Newman real happy. Newman tucks him right behind him, right up on his rear bumper. That didn't get him loose, so let's use the front bumper. That's how unhappy he was. <laughs> And because of that and the KFC hard work and performance by those two crews, Luke Lambert, Ryan Newman's crew chief and that crew, they had to make numerous stops to repair the front end. Todd Gordon and the 22 crew, they had to make numerous stops to repair the back of that car and they both are in the top 10. Now, I doubt they'll want to get together and share this award at the end of the race, no. but that's certainly some KFC hard work and performance right there. You'd have to take that bucket and break it in half, Larry. Tony Stewart released from the care center. He is okay. Sixty three laps to go still cleaning up from the crash in turn one where Tony Stewart gets loose gets up into Danica Patrick who then bounces off the wall into Landon Castle. There's Stewart top of the screen. On the restart. He gets a pretty good restart right here but then the 18 of Kyle Busch takes him three wide so now he's in the middle. He's got the five of Casey Kane to the outside Larson behind him. They just go down the corner three wide. He's just trying to get through there. But right here, when Larson goes the outside, sort of sucks him around the 17 of yeah. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. gets under, underneath him and just gets him too loose. Castle and Stewart in the garage. Patrick continues with damage. Chase Elliott trying to hold off Matt Kenseth and look at all the hungry hounds behind them. Hey, Chase Elliott hits those, those look restarts. Look at Logano. Perfect. Whoa. From the outside lane to the inside lane. I didn't think there was enough room to even do that. There isn't. <laughs> We've seen that before from him. That not elevator room, you just make top room. to bottom. Yeah, you just make some room. I'm coming through. Thank you. And he's a great restarter because of that. As well that, uh, as this 41, Kurt Busch, another great restarter as well. That 24 is impressing me. His restarts have been right on. I mean, he gets a great jump on the start here and takes advantage of it. You can see that Levy gets here coming to turn into the third I, turn to follow that FDW. I really like his second gear, whatever second gear, whatever gear he's using to take off on these restarts. It's really giving him a nice launch and then he can start controlling the restart on the lanes. Looking behind him as Dale Jr. gets loose off of turn three, almost gets the back end of the wall. Yeah, a little tail happy there off three. He knows he's got Kyle Busch behind him. I got to hold him off. He's coming. Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards 
right behind the 88 in seventh and eighth. Boy, you can see right there, the 18 slide up the racetrack. The 88 of Dale Jr. really got down on the yellow line to block that line, and the air just came right off the 18 and got him loose. And now the 19 of Carl Edwards going by him. Yeah, we've seen that 18 do that a Look couple of Newman. times. Whoa, where's Newman going? Anywhere he wants. Whoa. Holy smoly. Watch out, here stick? comes Harvick, too. He's going to lose, what, three spots yeah, in that wow. one move? 18 is just not getting up to speed here on this, uh, on this go. That's when there's just blood in the water. When you see somebody get out of shape, everybody starts attacking. Well, we're at, we're at 100 laps. We got 60 laps to go. It's time. If you got it, look at this. It. The two as well. Yeah, you know, there's something up with the 18. He's just not going anywhere right now. He's got a problem. Kozlowski fighting for 10th. Stenhouse trying to come with him. A couple car lengths back. Try to get down right here in front of Stenhouse. Ooh. And does. Just. Just, yes. They may have the pressures real, real low on the 18 car for this uh, for this restart. There's something to just not exactly just liking at this point, well, obviously. Uh, and DW, I also think that they like to start the cars a little freer because they typically build tighter as, as the run goes on, as well as being in traffic, you want to be a little bit freer so that you can get the car turned underneath others. Look at Harvey get this big run, playing with the throttle. Uh-oh, Ryan Blaney. Casey Kane's going to get him here. Yeah, Blaney got up that a little wide off turn three there, and Kane opened the door for him to go right by. Blaney was working really hard on the rear bumper. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Whoa, Larson, a little squirrely right there. Ryan, close. Ooh, maybe barely makes contact. Does a great job just staying right on his rear bumper, pushing him, and then gets to the inside. Larson says, hmm, I see how that does. I see how you do that now. <laughs> Let me return that favor. 13th through 15th. Now somewhere along the way, he got back ahead of Larson. Sprint Cup start number 19 for Chase Elliott. And he's led more laps today than in all those previous starts combined. I tell you, the last time by, it was as fast a lap as I've seen for quite a, quite a while, a 51-12 on the uh, 24 car. That's fast. He has a super fast short run car here, DW, and I'm curious to see if they made some adjustments on that 24 car in that last uh, stop. He's out front in clean air, obviously, but we saw the last time where the 20 and the 18 were able to run him down, but right now he's putting some great laps together. Here's a battle. Brian Blaney and Kyle Larson again. Uh -oh, oh, trouble. Caution. Caution. Michael Annette has been in the wall. And that'll bring out the caution. I know. For the seventh time. I know he's hit the wall at the right front. Oh, but yeah. he's got damage on every corner of that car. Some of that was prior. This looks like it could be a right front tire or brake or something that, that caused that it, car to impact it like that. That's, would, look how uh, flat it is on the right side. I thought I heard him say someone's car number, but I'm not sure. We've got some fire coming out the right front. He's going to need to stop. Pretty hard hit there. That Let's... is. That's a lot of damage. Let's uh, if we get a replay of this. Maybe we can see. I, I, it sounded like there might have been some contact. There he is. Yeah, he had some kind of issue. Looks like with the left front. I think that may have been a brake rotor, guys. Mm. Because a left front tire, I just don't see the left front tire causing that car. I mean, the left front tire is definitely down. So it could have been the left front tire. I just don't see that sending that car straight into the wall like oh. that. Hmm. Now, Paul Menard is already out of the race, and his problem was a broken rotor. He certainly didn't have a problem getting it stopped right mm -hmm. here, no. so maybe not. Cars will still have rear brakes, even if the left front or right front goes out. They're separate master cylinders, so they can still slow the car down. Michael's okay. He seems to be unhappy about something. So, Larry. <laughs> Where are we? Thank goodness my calculator is solar powered. I'll yeah. be out of batteries right now. Yeah, I mean, we've got 32 drivers on the lead lap. Track position is king. This really does not do anything for you. You still would have to make another stop. Now, we may have drivers at the back of the field needing tires, needing adjustments, but I think the front part of the field absolutely stays out here because really it's been more caution laps than anything since they all were on pit road last.
Yeah, Larry, I mean, if this thing happens to go green for a long period of time and those further back in the field come in and top off with fuel, they might be able to just put a splash in later on just to make it to the end and might be able to make up some spots there. And to Larry's point, pit road is open. No takers in the first part of the field. Oh, Keselowski's not coming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> neither is Kyle likes, Busch. Yeah, he likes to play games. Yeah, big fakey do. All right, Martin Truex is in. So is Trevor Bain and about eight cars behind them. No, you're good. Okay. You One of the greatest sportsmen who ever lived passed this weekend. Born Cassius Clay, the Olympic boxing champion, won the heavyweight title, and then refused the draft, was stripped of his title, and had to battle all the way to the Supreme Court to get reinstated and won yet again. And uh, you saw the pictures there. Both of you have met him. Actually, all three of them met him. You worked with him on a on a committee, and just what a commanding presence! Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. You know, somebody that that to me stood up for what he believed in in yeah. so many different ways, and uh, that's very inspiring. As well as could talk the game and, oh, yeah. and back it up. I oh, love yeah. that was, as well. He was awesome. He was from Louisville, Kentucky. Of course, I was Owensboro, similar age. He's 74, uh, and just somebody that. I just loved his style. Uh, I love somebody that didn't mind telling you he was going to do it and then go out and do it. And uh, I met him in Louisville, Kentucky. We got into, inducted in the Kentucky uh, Hall of Fame together. And it just never will leave my mind. A man that spoke and talked and was always had lots to say, walked into a room and couldn't say a word. It's just the contrast between when he was young and later on. I can see the influence, Daryl. Because I can hear you saying that. <laughs> well, he said things that I've repeated. I can tell you that. You know something he did that was so cool? Every time, I, I think I met him twice, and he'll, he'll take his fist and he'll hand it to you and put it up next to your chin. And, yeah. and you know, he, he loved that you got a chance to put your fist on the champ's 
chin, that's probably the only chance you're ever going to get. Yeah. Let me just say this real quick. Mohammed said one time, he said, I, I'm, I don't blame boxing for what it's done to me because it's done so much for me. True. Another great quote. Very nice. 54 laps to go, a couple uh, late pit stops, and Danica Patrick has taken her car to the garage. Now let's get an update on crew chiefs as to what to expect in the waning stages of this race. Vince? With Johnny Klausmeyer, the uh, substitute crew chief for Kurt Busch this week. How's it going in your seat today, and how's the 41 looking to the finish here? It's going pretty good. We're just a little bit tight, but uh, everything's really good. We're uh, on sequence to stop one more time in about 20 laps and ride on out. Car capable of winning? I think so, given the right situation. Like I said, we're just a little tight taking off, but we've been adjusting on all day and making improvements. Thank you, Johnny. Let's go to Matt. An impressive list of drivers that Alan Guffs has been one with here in Sprint Cup and trying to add another one here with Chase Elliott. What's impressed you the most about his run today here at Pocono, especially with so much limited track time? Yeah, I think the weather conditions, you know, were fairly tough on us. Chase not having a lot of laps here and anything and no laps in a Sprint Cup car. So, uh, you know, to lead the race like he's doing is an amazing thing. He's a great talent. You know, I'm not really surprised, to be honest with you. Uh, he's really good and it uh, doesn't take him long to pick things up. So. Car's been pretty good. He's been doing a great job. I think the 20 maybe is a slight bit better than us, but uh, if we can get him packed back in traffic, that uh, helps us out a little bit. And with these caution flag laps, they are now good to go on one more stop. 54 laps to go. Chase Elliott has led the most laps so far, 38. Let's get our Ford Performance driver update. It was an all Penske Ford front row. Here at Pocono, Brad Keselowski is currently 10th. And he's had to overcome a penalty for unapproved body adjustments. And Joey Logano currently in fifth. I think they got that damage on the back of the 22 there fixed, Mike, and that really has helped him. He's been able to gain some speed and get back up here in the top five. Yeah, both of those two have had to overcome different uh, obstacles today and doing a great job battling through them. Six, actually, uh, Logano. Now, Josh Wise got the free pass on this caution. It was uh, Jeb Burton, who's in the 32 this week, at the caution before. You want to know just how tough of a job it is for a spotter here at Pocono? Well, look, look how yeah. far away that is. <laughs> oh, wow. You'll see those spotters using their binoculars at this track. And worse, as they go five and six wide into turn one, the spotter's only seeing the tails of those cars. They're not seeing them in profile side on like yeah. you'd rather. And that's something you talk to your spotter about before the race ever starts. They'll tell you, I can't really clear you at this section on the racetrack. I don't have a great view. You're going away from me, so I'm going to give you all the information I can, but at some point, you're on your own. Always like that. At some point, you're on your own. <laughs> By the way, that point is now. <laughs> Getting ready to go green. Let's take an inside ride with the 88, sponsored by Nationwide. We can make it to our next window. It's just how far we go into that next window so we save for the end, you know, in case there's a green-white checkered or something like that. Yeah, well, you do what you want to do. I'll just do it when you tell me to pit. That far, I'm just keeping you informed as well. Well, he's in the top five. Just having a pretty solid day, I can tell you. Pretty good place to be. That's Dell Jr. saying, listen, we're getting ready to restart here. <laughs> They've been going five, <laughs> six wide. That's what I'm thinking about. In my Daryl DW, that window they keep talking about, it starts opening about lap 124. But I think to, to the point I just also heard, if we can go a little deeper, that means we'll have a little bit in the bank should we go to overtime. Next Saturday, Dale Earnhardt Jr. will be our guest analyst for the Xfinity race at Michigan oh, here on great. FS1. Well, next week's going to be amazing with that aero package you're going to Michigan with and the Sprint Cup cars. Oh, me. What's that, the no downforce package? <laughs> no downforce. <laughs> That's it. Lesser downforce for sure. Green flag. Chase Elliott pulling Jimmy Johnson, Kurt Busch in the middle, Logano on the bottom. It's going to get ugly. Watch the 19. He's had issues. Carrying too much speed into turn one, getting on the splitter. Four wide. Wow. Becomes not, too wide. Not that not, time. He got it no. one down. Man, they sorted out, but just barely. And look how that 24 jumps out there. I mean, he is long gone on these restarts. He's been incredible on these restarts. And so is this guy, the 41 of Kurt Busch. Yeah, he's going to get after him here, but that 24 gets a nice gap between him and second place. Look on at the this, DW. Dale Jr. creeping into the picture here. Here, pick the bottom of the four, one back. Look at this. 
These Henry cars pretty stout today, guys. They got uh, Chase leading, Earnhardt third, Jimmy Johnson fourth. Where's the five at? He's in the hunt here. He's 13th, Casey Kane. Nice run by these guys. Newman and Larson peel out from the crowd. Larson goes way down to the basement and back up. <laughs> that is amazing that you can get that done. Boy, Newman got a little loose there. Well, Justin. look at the five going three wide. Oh, oh, oh Newman, bam. oh, no. He got into Kyle. And Kyle heavy. Bush got into the wall. Yep. That's caution. Kyle knocked Yellow's the out. fire out of that wall. To the garage. Uh, let's not make two. Oh. That, that's a perfect example. When that five got underneath the 31, it just loosened the car. Very similar to what happened when the 17 got underneath the 14 of Tony Stewart and got him loose and he, he corrected and unfortunately the 18 was right there. I don't think I don't think you need to go to the garage. I think you need to come to pit and let's look at this thing. Now they were fighting for 10th place. Newman will be in the middle of this mix in the blue car. So Larson goes by on the inside, side by side with the 31. 18 gets high and checks up a little bit. Here comes a momentum, but right here when the five goes underneath the 31, they Just almost made up. contact. Yep. And he got loose right into the 18. Shot him up the hill, but I would not take that 18 to the garage until I came up pit because I know it's got damage, but they might be able to fix it. Yeah, but DW, I mean, they're not needing points. They have, what, two, three wins already this season? Yeah, I understand, but I'd fix it. Still rolling. Nope, going to the garage. Yeah, he's going straight to the garage. Pretty big impact there. I think there may be some suspension damage on the right front. Well, you know, in the car, and you got the steering wheel in your hand. You can see where the wheel's off center. You know if the toe's knocked out. You know how much damage you got. It just looked from uh, the outside. It was not as bad as he may have thought. And uh, Kyle Busch crashed out of the last two races. That'll be three in a row if they're not able to fix this. And unfortunately, he's not going to get that check mark of uh, no. fulfilling those another track on on that list of tracks that he had never won at before. And let's listen in on Ryan Newman. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even sure I hit the 18. I think it was more the air that was screwed up there than anything, but I can't even tell if the five hit me, but I know I was crossed up and uh, I'm not sure that I hit the 18, but I did. If I did, it wasn't hard enough to hurt anything on my car. Jamie. Well, Kyle Busch's first half of the race went pretty well. He worked his way up to the front, led three laps, and then on one pit stop, they didn't make any changes, and that's when he started going backwards, and that's when he started getting frustrated, saying, everybody's passing me, I can't pass anyone. And as you can imagine, this incident just now, as he sits in the garage, he's on the radio, pretty hot, pretty frustrated, the fact that they lost all that position and got back there. Yeah, we saw him getting passed by a lot of cars uh, just before this. Hardly anyone pitting under this caution, about five cars in the back. Here's Clint Boyer driving through it as we go to break.
All the fans watch it on TV at home. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the event. Ring, 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 ring. It's all good, man. Looking low, looking low. All clear, driving away. He's falling back to drive there to two. Clear, clear, clear. Brake's not working. He's not slowing it down. Middle's wide open, middle's wide open. All right, fellas, a beautiful day for a race. That it is. After 112 laps, here's your Bush Beer race summary. Chase Elliott has led 44 laps today, the most of all drivers. He's the leader. 32 lead lap cars. It's only 34 on the track. Eight cautions for 31 laps. Denny Hamlin so far, the only rookie driver to win this race. Well, we haven't well, even spoken to him much today. He's running back in 15th place, Denny Hamlin. And for all of the talk about the Toyota Joe Gibbs dominance, right now, all of the top five are Chevrolets. Remember Elliot, what I, Kurt Busch, Johnson, Earnhardt, and Harvick. Remember what I told you about last year? At this time, Chevy had eight of the 13 wins. This time this year, Toyota has eight of the 13 wins. And so now we'll see how it goes from here forward, who has the most wins in the second half of the year. First Toyota is Matt Kenseth. In six, the first Ford is Joey Logano in seventh. I think, I think Logano's still a little wounded, that car is, but uh, he's coming a long way. And I'll tell you one thing, watch him get, we get ready to go here. He's got right behind Kevin Harvick. I don't know how you call this. <laughs> I don't even know what Six, you call five, it. Seven I don't even know you what know you what? call it. <laughs> Wait for the caution and we'll have replays. <laughs> God, five that time wide. It didn't work out for Logano. He got in the middle three wide. Watch him get loose here oh, if he's not man. careful. He, he took a big. He got took a big hit. That one group was five wide into the corner. And that's what happens when you have 32 cars on the lead lap this late in the race. Every restart, I feel like we, we see Chase Elliott take off and Kurt Busch and Jimmy Johnson side by side going into the tunnel turn. Yeah, Kurt was able to get by Jimmy there. That, uh, that'll help uh, Kurt maybe catch uh, the, the, the 24 Chase, but I don't know. That 24 is stout. Seventh place here. And here's another Hendrick oh. car starting to work their way up there. Casey Kane. I don't think we can count those JGR cars out just yet. Nope. That Kansas pretty strong. And Jimmy didn't get it down to the bottom. He's going to get a run on him right here. Yeah, got a drag race down the back now. 20 looking to the inside. I don't know if he's going to quite get there. He's don't trying. I think no. he can quite make it. By the way, final round NHRA drag racing from Epping, New Hampshire follows this race today Ooh, on Fox Sports. Speaking World. of drag race. There you are. We've been seeing a lot of drag racing on these restarts. Look at this. Dale Jr. takes advantage of the 20 not getting by the 48. And he's going to try to get to the inside through turn three. I'll tell you, that 88 is pretty good today, Jeff. Uh, you know, he won both races here a couple of years ago. He knows how to get around this joint. They got a good car today, boys. Pretty good crowd for a Monday. Look at him. <laughs> go, Junior, go. Got the race sponsor exalt on the car. Can't miss him, that's for sure. And he's got a fast race car to the track he's won at before. Now put down your tweeters. We are not cheerleading. We're no. just enjoying this. No. I don't know. Good grief. We're watching the race. We're race fans. Danica Patrick back on track. And Kozlowski's going to be part of this. Yeah, there's a, bunch, there's, there's a bunch of guys going to be a part of this. Kevin Harvick right there looking underneath Kevin, the, the two car. He's yeah, got that, that pass. That pushing the two, uh, the two pushing the 20 helped the 20 hurt the two, though. The four is going to get inside of him and possibly make this pass. Listen to that throttle. He's working it, baby. He's working it. He can't get wide open, can he, until he gets really far off the corner. Tells you the grip level down there. I tell you what, though, that 24 car, Jeff, he can shoot out there about a second and a half, two second lead and seems to be able to hold it pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we're looking two tenths faster than the second place of Kurt Busch on that last lap. Now, with Danica back in the race, 16 laps down, believe it or not, she's in the free pass position. A lot of drivers have had to go behind the wall for work today, Jamie. There has been a lot of action back here. The 27 of Paul Menard, they fixed the brake rotor. He's back out. The 10 of Danica Patrick, she had a left upper control arm that they had to repair before she could continue. You see there on the right side, Tony Stewart back in the car. An army of crew members been working to replace the entire front clip on this car. He's all about salvaging some points. 
and the 18 at Kyle Busch, the latest to come back in the garage. Right front suspension is broken. Adam Stevens, crew chief, just told me they're trying to knock that out and try to get him back out on track as well. Although the chase is all about winning, with so few winners, points are going to be very important determining which 16 drivers advance to the playoffs. And particularly for Tony Stewart. I mean, he's got two hurdles to clear. He's got to get in a top 30 in points, and he needs a win. But right now, he needs points. Oh, my oh, gosh. What Austin happened to the Dillon. three? Ninth caution, lap 118, wow. 119. Yeah, I, bud. I guess you are. I'm not sure what happened here. We'll have to take a look Go at garage, it. Guys. He was already having a pretty tough day. He was in 24th at the time this happened. Boy, heavy damage. Look at how it's Andy, flat on the right side. It went straight. I don't know. It went straight. Sound like that's a tire problem. It's either a brake or a tire problem. It's usually the only two things or suspension. Yeah. Failure. And he, I tell you, I talked to him on uh, Saturday Look morning. He said wow. high hopes. He thought he was going to have a great day today. Yep. Yeah, you folks took a little golf cart ride. Rode around on the golf cart, and he was so in encouraged by the way they've been performing. Had a great run over in Charlotte. And he's on fire. That's Richard Childers. Hall of Famer Richard Childers. And Austin's granddad. So we think a tire went down. Let's see if this supports it. Right behind the yellow car. Yeah, I see some ch see oh, the yeah. pieces flying off right there and then the car just goes dead. Yeah, but oh, that's, that's a brake rotor. That's, oh, yeah, that's oh, a brake oh, rotor. Oh, yeah. Oh. We already uh, documented that 27 had issues with the left front brake rotor. Yeah. Now the right front of the 3. You know who's worried now? The 31. <laughs> the 31. <laughs> <laughs> and is the 95 that Ty Dillon is driving. Mm. Is that an RCR provided car? I thought we had heard earlier that it was not this weekend, okay. uh, unlike other weekends when he's filled in. So let's talk strategy. What do you say, Larry? Well, I've been talking since the beginning of the race. The fuel window is 32 to 36 laps. That pretty much was the consensus of that garage area. Right now, the pits will be open with 41 to go. That means we're going to go back racing somewhere around 39 to go. When I think about trying to stretch fuel mileage, I think about a two car, Brad Keselowski. I would not be a bit surprised to see somebody try it right here and see what they can do. We've seen Kyle Busch run out of gas here. Joey Logano run out of gas here. Yep. A lot of drivers in the closing stages. This is a game changer out. in the race right now. People are going to come because they know cautions are going to come out. They're going to stretch it. I think if they don't come, they're going to be in big trouble. Mike, you cannot coast around this racetrack. You no. can't make it. If you run out of gas over on the front, you're done. No, but those caution laps, they can save a lot of fuel. And by the way, you can't get pushed on the last lap either. Matt? And the 24 is in. Look for a chassis adjustment. The car much tighter this run, but Chase thinks it's more due to the heat cycles that have gone through these tires. Jamie? It's been a great day for Jimmy Johnson, running top three, a three-time winner here. The call was to pit four tires, Vince. And for the 41 of Kurt Busch, pitted running second. The car's been just a tick free throughout the course of the day, but it has been good. It's going to be a four tire change for the 41 of Kurt Busch. Man, Vance what a Auto Parts race off pit road he is not going to play to Chase Elliott's favor. No, sir. Because a lot of drivers took no tires or two tires. Who's that? Coming off pit road first? Are you kidding me? The <laughs> 78 spots. <laughs> Martin Truex Jr. Oh, God. Where did he come from? He just got here from Charlotte. He got here a little late. <laughs> Casey Mears got no tires at all and came out second. Well, folks, this changes everything. <laughs>
Well, Martin Truex came out of the pits first, but the right rear tire, not only did it lose air, the inner liner also went flat and he had to come around on the rim. You see a little sheet metal damage behind the tire from that? Gonna put four on it while they have a chance. They took two on the first pit stop. Let's uh, see what we see here, Mike. See him come into his pit. Gets two tires. Comes here down. he comes right here. Now was there contact? Between he and the 13, no, no, no contact, contact there. Looks Boy, clean. That is odd. Looks clean. Did he run over some debris maybe from that three car? Well, that bra that brake rotor yeah, very well could have. Yeah, pieces the, down there. And you're the first car out. He's the first one that's going to hit it. Yeah. The leader cleans the track for everybody. Yep. Boy, it just well, unbelievable but, to me to think of the weekend that they had in Charlotte and now to come here and nothing seems to be going right but, for but them. But now, Larry, that changes their fuel strategy a little bit, doesn't it? Who is that, DW? Seven, I'm sorry, I was looking at the 78. 78. Let's go to Vince. Yeah. Yeah, just talked to the team and uh, also Greg Stucker from Goodyear. Knocked the inner valve stem out of that right rear, and that was the problem. Either during the pit stop itself or either uh, maybe ran, out, ran over something, as you guys are speculating, debris. So knocking the inner valve stem out, that would flatten the inner liner. Yeah. And not have enough air left to fill that entire cavity inside the tire. And down it goes. Wow. Yeah, because we watched it on our Eagle system. He was in trouble by the time he got to the middle of turn one. So yeah. that told me right there, it happened on pit road. Well, you think, Larry, we were talking about the brake rotor of the three car. We saw pieces flying everywhere. It possibly hit a piece of that brake rotor as he exited pit road. He may have, but it certainly sounds like per Vince, it was hitting that valve stem. Before and, he ever and, got it, and he was, it was losing air before he ever left. Exactly. So, so, Larry, you're saying that the, the tire changer with the gun hit can yeah, possibly those valve, valve stems stem. are right in that window, okay. which is very near the lug nuts. And if they just miss a little bit, it can go right in there and shear that valve stem off. Wow. That's the kind of bad luck this team has had other than what they had. The good, they had so much good luck last week. Back to normal. We'll check when he comes around. I believe Truex is still on. Yes, he's still on yeah. the lead lap. Yeah, he is. As we get ready to restart. <laughs> It'll Boy. be 38 laps to go when they come back. This is going to be a wild one right here. Yep. Look, he's on the front row. Final round of the NHRA from Epping, New Hampshire, coming up next. A couple cars that stayed out on older tires, three or four cars. Green flag. Ty Dillon, Casey Mears fight for the lead. Four wide. Jimmy Johnson goes the far inside. Junior goes up the middle. That's older tires versus newer tires right there. It even plays out in the restarts. Ooh, Chase, Chase Elliott getting a great oh, restart doing, to the outside. Is, Look at this. He's going oh, somewhere. Jimmy Johnson's coming around. Oh, no. And he almost oh, saved it. Oh, he did. He did big, save it. Yeah, but he big impact to the inside wall. I think he did no. hit the wall. Oh, he hit it hard yeah. to left front. Caution's out. Caution. Got in the inside wall. How many times have we seen cars get arrow loose down here in the corner when somebody up beside of them or behind them? Well, DW, to me, that is the effects of the, the, the smaller spoiler, less downforce. You right, Jimmy? Allows you to get closer to the cars, but it's also going to get you looser when you're underneath cars. Wait till next week. Oh, yeah. There's an inch spoiler, rear, uh, inch smaller rear spoiler next week. Now we'll watch the restart Just again. Up. Steering wheel pretty straight. You'll see everybody Headboard. flare out here. And the what? 48 will jump way out of line. He, goes, he goes inside Trevor inside. Bain. Junior goes to the middle between Trevor Bain and the 34. Chase Elliott is pushing the, the, the 88 up through here, which is going to work out beautiful for him. Yep. So far, everything's fine. Chase gets a great run here. Jimmy does as well to the inside. He got, on, he got down on the apron. The 48 got a little bit down on the apron, I think. Well, the 13 had to stay low, also right up on his door, because the uh, 24 was coming to the outside. Just hard racing, if you ask me. Yep. It looked like he was trying to stay off Casey Mears. 
Well, he was. If I mean, he, he was trying to just stay to the inside of him, yep. stay right up next to him and, and carry that momentum. Unfortunately, the 13 had to hold it even tighter down there uh, because the 24 was coming on the outside. Yeah, it looked like the uh, 48 got on the apron just enough that it got him loose. And he did get into mirrors, you see, right around the tire. Jimmy did a great job saving it. I thought he had his Unfortunately, yeah. he ran out of room where that no. inside wall came out. They ran into the state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> And it's unfortunate. He's done. They're Boy. going to the garage. Wow. Tough break. They had run well all day. And here's where you'll see him get into the inside wall. Yeah, he made a little contact with the looks like the two car possibly. Trying to straighten it out. The two and the in the six are both white. I, I yeah. one time I think it's the two and it's the six, but I believe that was Keslowski. He might have gotten into a little bit. Well, they were both running right together, so could have been either or. Vince? There was some right rear contact on that two of uh, Brad Keselowski. Keselowski said it felt like it was significant, but the spotter, Joey Meyer, took a good look at it, and he said it's a little bit of cosmetic damage, but uh, they don't believe it's enough to pit for. Crew chief Paul Wolf said we lose way too many positions at this stage. We're going to live with it until it goes bad. Well, that's an approved body damage there. Ty Dillon surrenders the lead and comes to pit road along with half a dozen other cars. Welcome to Pocono, the Exalta We Paint Winners 400. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the leader under this caution flag. Five Chevys there out front once again. And Jimmy Johnson's car quickly pushed to the garage area, and they're cleaning up a lot of fluid in turn number two that could be residue from him hitting the inside wall. Yeah, definitely some some fluids over there on that right front, maybe an oil cooler or something uh, broke a line. So that fluid's out there. So they're going to clean up the track through the tunnel turn. But wow, have we seen some <laughs> wild restarts here at Pocono. And now we've got teammates of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Chase Elliott on the front row for this restart as well as some on older tires mixed in right behind them. Uh, it's going to make it even more interesting. Yeah, big props if you could win the uh, sponsored race. Well, in, yes, uh, exalt the car. <laughs> that would be a big prop, wouldn't it? <laughs> Jeff, we know he has the skill to win this race. Does he have the experience to hold off all these drivers 
that are trying to beat him. Who needs experience? <laughs> he's got he's got the will. Uh, he's got a great race car, a great race team, and he's got the skill. I mean, I'm telling you, he has impressed me. I would never know that this is a rookie, not just this weekend, all year long. Uh, both of those cars are really good on short runs. I think it's going to make for this restart to be extremely interesting. Right, if he well, nails that restart like we've seen him do, game over. Oh, we'll see. Larry. Yeah, guys, let's talk about our advanced auto parts pit performance. And I'm going to look at our leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., in his 88 team. They've made four stops right there. And that last stop on lap 110, a 12.09. But on that third stop right there, under green at lap 86, Greb Ives got very aggressive with adjustments on that car, taking wedge out. And Matt also made a shim change on the right front shot, being aggressive on stops. Mac, not a question about experience, but it's about whether they have enough fuel. Alan Gustafson told Chase Elliott when Chase inquired about how much fuel are they looking at it for their situation under the last restart. Save as much as you can under caution. Go as hard as you can under green. Under this caution, he told him, max save, which means shutting it off and coasting as much as possible, trying to make it to the finish. Well, I know how you could save a lot of fuel. Draft at 88. <laughs> If you had a car, you know, had a really good car and you want to try to make it on fuel, let that other guy go out there and break the air and you just follow along. Now, don't forget, Kevin Harvick stopped in and topped off. Mm. They can make it. He's 20th, but they can make it. Those of you waiting for the NHRA final round from Epic, New Hampshire, you'll see it all right after the Sprint Cup race Man, right we, here on FS1. We've had drag racing all day long. <laughs> Down this front straight away. Yeah, I know it. Uh, they have four wide in Charlotte. This is seven wide drag racing here. Yeah, this I is just think you'd be amazed how much they can save fuel under caution, especially when that caution comes out. When it immediately comes out, you shut the engine off. You can coast almost an entire straightaway. So I, I, I really believe one more caution and they're going to be safe. Hey, Mike, also Ryan Blaney, Jeremy Bullins, the crew chief of that 21 car, they came in and topped off. So that means Harvick and Blaney, they have to go 39 laps where everyone else will have to go 41 to go. That's Kurt Busch has already been told they are two laps short on well, the 41. And, and that's right. But they're, they're banking, they're gambling on cautions. Those others are, are gambling that it goes green. I'm saying there will be a. I'm not going to gamble. I'm going to say there's going to be a the caution. It's been looking, yeah. DW. In the I'm last, on the caution. In the last 20 laps, we've had four caution flags. Yeah. Let's try it again. 33 to go. Boy, I tell you, Chase Elliott's car has just been taken off on these starts. That 24 He's is side nailing. by side right there with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. not going to give it to him. He's going to make him earn it. Casey Mears there fourth oh, without new Kurt tires. Push. Here comes Kurt. He's going to have to get up in front of him. Yikes. Watch be careful, the kid. Be careful. Logano pokes out in the second pack. I am inside. I'm shocked that the 41 was not able to get inside the 24 right there. Uh, oh, look at this. Whoa. Oh, no. Look at this move. Watch out for Kurt Busch. Yeah, he's going to come to the inside. He took advantage that. of that. Yeah, you're going to pay for he's that. He's going to get by Junior here as well. 41 had such a run over the tunnel that uh, Chase. Now, now Chase is going to have to do the same thing. Take advantage of these cars running side by side. Watch this. Watch this run. The 24 is going to get down the front straightaway. Possibly go by both of them. The opportunist, Kurt Busch, trying to get to the lead. Yeah, he's not close enough. He's just not quite there. I think the advantage is to the 41 of Kurt Busch here. Great move. You know, I, I can hear somebody cheering really, really loud. And I that think would it's be? Tony Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt's crew chief under a one race suspension from Lugnut not tight to the wheel at the end of last week's race. Remember, Kurt Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr. both winless this year so far, both trying to make the chase with a win. I like where the 24, I know, I know he's been leading a lot, but he can save a lot of fuel right there where he's running right now. And here yeah. comes Keselowski. Vince? If it's possible that the 41 of Kurt Busch has kind of actually run under the radar this season. I mean, he scored the second most amount of points, but because he doesn't have a win, it, a lot of people have looked at him as maybe they've underachieved, but that's not been the case. Seven straight top tens. No one has a streak more than four going on right now, and they have had the speed. Kurt says we're an A-minus team. We just haven't been able to finish the job. They're looking pretty good right now, but they're going to need a little help on fuel. They're a lap to two laps short. 
Well, they finished six at Charlotte last week, so they've been pretty consistent. Well, look at the group right behind the four leaders. Mears, Logano, Bain, and Kane. All in a fairly tight pack there, fifth through eighth. Remember, Casey Mears got up to that position because he took fuel only on his last stop. Yeah, that's a great gamble, great pit strategy by Booty Barker. Good job, guys. I like Booty Barker. He's a great crew chief. Fun. Jamie? And Jimmy Johnson remains in his car back here in the garage. Oil cooler was punctured. That is where all that oil and fluid came from. Left front suspension and a lot of body damage. They're going to try to get it repaired and get back out before the end. Meanwhile, crew chief Jack and Alice keeps poking his head at my monitor to see their teammates battling up front. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. Damaged cars that are back on track. Kyle Busch, Danica Patrick, Paul Menard, Tony Stewart, Landon Castle, Brian Scott. All many laps down. Joey Logano on fresher tires has passed Casey Mears and puts that uh, yellow Ford back into the top five. Yeah, he's somebody to keep an eye on. They've had a lot of damage that left rear, as you can see, but that car has been really good lately. Well, I'd say also Keselowski, I mean, he's really putting a lot of pressure on Chase Elliott, but we know nobody saves fuel better than the two of Brad Keselowski. If, if you need to have a fast race car and get to the end on fuel, he does it as well or better than anybody. Bill France asked me one time, he says, how do you go so far on fuel? I said, I got more than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kozlowski has been told he has enough fuel to make it. Yeah, I think there's a little cat and mouse going on right here with the 24, the two. I think they're trying to save a little fuel to make it to the end. I'm not so sure that those Penske Fords, maybe they're making a little bit better fuel mileage than some of the others that are out there. Oh, We're 29 laps away from finding out. Yes, we are. Yeah, Kizowski's is pretty crafty. I mean, I saw him at one race where he would actually clutch the car, hold the clutch in. The car would coast into the corner, saved a lot of fuel. Yeah, under green. Yeah, under yeah. green. Amazing. Larry, between the three manufacturers, we know NASCAR has them pretty equal on horsepower. But what about fuel mileage? Yeah, and I know that can be confusing because other than Kevin Harvick and Ryan Blaney, pretty much everyone pitted with 41 laps to go. Now, I think one thing that's going to help everybody's situation, we've had eight cautions, and we've already talked about how much fuel they can save on the caution. But, Mike, with electronic fuel injection and that electronic control unit, it's the mapping system. You can dial in a little different power versus fuel mileage, and that sometimes can be the difference. So, Vince, how is Kurt Busch saving fuel? Well, we told you he's a couple of laps short. That's what they told him. They've come on the radio and they've said, Kurt, we need you to lift 100 yards early and do it for 15 laps. If you do that, we can get to the end. Wow. And they, that is amazing information. We used to have to just do a guess. You had to guess at it. Now they got it down to a science. Yeah, they've started implementing plan A, plan B, plan C, and each one of those gets more and more aggressive, and a lot of it just has to do with lap time, overall lap time, but you can minimize the amount of lap time drop and save fuel by picking certain locations into each corner where you're going to lift. See Matt Kenseth, the number 20? He is the first Toyota in this race in eighth place. The first three are Chevys, the next two are Fords, the next two are Chevys. Top Toyota is eighth right now. That's something we haven't seen much of this year. No. Now, the 13 starting to fade. I think, is he conserving, trying yeah. to save fuel? I'd say he probably is. He's already thinking about making it all the way. Old tires, remember. Well, I know he As has well. older tires, but, but it looks to me like he's even taking it a step further. Good point. He's not fighting anybody right now. He's nope. just letting them go, checking up early, going to the corner. Yeah, the other thing that these cars have got that uh, we didn't have, they got the fuel pumps. They got electric fuel pumps in the fuel cell. They drain these things to the, they're dry as a bone when the race is over with. Kevin Harvick at 13th. Now he restarted 20th, as we pointed out, and they told him he has enough fuel. It's a question of can he get there. I mean, now here's the thing with Kevin Harvick. He can be aggressive. He can go make, put, you know, drive deep into the corner. He's not worried about saving fuel at all, so he's going to try to put the pressure on these others that are saving fuel by making up lap time on them. Yeah, he's eight seconds back. He's got a lot of work to do. 10th, 11th, 12th here from Larson. As Carl Edwards makes the pass for eight on Casey Mears. 
25 laps to go in Pocono. We'll keep it right here for the run to the finish. Kurt Busch leading Dale Jr. by four tenths of a second. With 22 laps to go, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s 88 has driven away from teammate Chase Elliott, and now he's tight in the draft of Kurt Busch for the lead. Neither have won this year. You see Kurt Busch in ninth right now, trying to put a one in that column, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to move over to the left side of the board with a win and lock their place in the chase for the Sprint Cup. Chase Elliott has led the most laps in this race. Currently, he is third, two seconds back of the lead, Matt. Mike, Alec Gustafson told Chase Elliott, you need to, to let off a little earlier. We need to save fuel. The last couple laps, he is about four tenths to five tenths a lap slower. More conversation between driver and crew chief. How about him? Is he short or no? Yes, sir. Everyone is. Everyone is. Even the two in front of you. It's going to be a gamer who could go the fastest and save the most. Wow. Go the fastest and save the most. <laughs> now we're going to hear from the leaders, Kurt Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr. 41 needs to save to make it. We do not. Go get him. Wow. About wow. five back. They told him he don't have to save anymore, so just keep your lead. Wow, Dale Jr. is just going to push Kurt Busch out there. Yeah, that's what I do. Make him eat up that fuel. Push him hard, make him burn fuel. How about the two, Vince? Well, they just told Brad Keselowski, while others around us are saving, we do not have to save. Go get them. That's where I'd like to be. Go get them. 20 laps to go. On the first pit stop, a crew member leaned into the right side. Fell. Altering the bodywork. Yeah, slipped into the bodywork. <laughs> And they had to do a drive through after the race went green, but boy, has he recovered. But you guys remember the last time that this happened and the results? I think it was Las Vegas. Same penalty. Here it comes. This guy's, Watch this the hip check. Bam. bam. <laughs> That's a big butt right there. <laughs> All right, and now what they does have that to come do? In. Well, it just caves in those doors, and what it does is it, it creates a flare in the fender right in front of the right rear tire. What that does 
and they found this in the wind tunnel, it just creates a little more side force, gives them a little bit more downforce and speed to be able to lean on. Um, you know, you can maybe free the car up a little bit more and have a little bit more to lean on, make the car go faster. And to your point, when that happened at Las Vegas, where did he end up? Yeah, he won. Mike, you asked me about fuel mileage being different in manufacturers. Okay, look at the top two, Kurt Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr. The 88 says they can make it, the 41 says they possibly can't. Both Chevrolets go one step beyond that. Both of those Chevrolet engines come from Hendrick Engine Department. So I think that right there tells you the difference in tuning, driving style, and Jeff, I think you've talked about this, just in how you shift, where you shift from third to fourth. Yeah, absolutely, Larry. It, it could come down just to that short shifting, how much they felt like they saved under caution. Maybe they, uh, Greg Ives feels like that they waited a split second longer on the pit stop and maybe put a little bit more in there. I, maybe the 41 didn't get it full. It's, it's hard to say why they feel like there's a difference in one making it, one being too short. So some of the Chevys can make it, some not. What about that uh, leading Toyota in seventh place, Matt Kenseth? Matt? Mike, he and his teammate Carl Edwards both, they're running seventh and eighth. Kenseth was told moments ago that he is good to go on fuel to the finish. Mike, yeah. look, at, look at those times. Everybody's running the same speed. 30, 30, 32, 31, 38, 41, until you get to Kenseth, and he's got a little in the bank here. He's running a 52-11, three-tenths quicker than everybody else. I just, to me, DW, 52-30, which was our leader, Kurt Busch, the last time, same behind him the, first, the next three, four spots. That's not saving much fuel no, to me. No, I know it's They're not. They're not saving fuel. Not at all. Now, this is all bad news for Kevin Harvick, who came in, topped off. You know, he's got... I, I believe a little bit fresher tires as well. He's not saving fuel at all, but if they're not going to come in, that advantage could be gone for him. Well, Harvick's fast. He's 51.99. He's got he's gaining, but I don't think he's going to have enough time. He's re, he restarted 20th. He's worked his way up to ninth. 17 laps to go. Oh, look at this! A run by the two car. Starting to put the pressure on the yep. 24. That's Chase Elliott trying to save fuel, and the two car wanting to just push him out there. Now, of course, all this assumes we go to lap 160 and only lap 160. Well, I'm going to take a look at old Larry Mack's trends of the race. <laughs> and I'm looking at the last four June races here. Reason just the last four, that's when we made the transition to 500 miles to 400 miles. But the last caution flag in our last four June races comes average with 12 laps to go. Now, overtime. We have only had two overtimes in the last 15 June races. You have to go all the way back to 2010 and 2005. So normally, on the norm, we don't get an overtime here. I'll tell you, one of the craziest finishes I've ever been a part of here at Pocono was last August, I believe it was. They were all running out of fuel in the final lap. We knew, who, nobody knew who was going to win that race. And Could this be playing out like gonna, that today? It's going to be the same thing today. 41 just stretched it out on the 88 now. So he knows he's not. They already told him he can't make it. Well, you're so, riding with the guy who won it last August on fumes. Joey Logano. So Harvick, Ryan Blaney, A.J. Allmendinger, and then from Truex on back, all of those drivers, Truex 22nd on back, all those drivers stopped a few laps later than the rest of the leaders. Now Dale Jr., Chase Elliott, Brad Keselowski, they all slowed down a couple tenths that lap. Yeah, but right now the four is too far back. I don't think he, I don't think even if he's got fuel, it's going to help him that much. Vince? You know, it's interesting. You talked about uh, the similar manufacturers, the same manufacturers, sometimes even teammates that have different fuel mileage. Well, Joey Logano, the team has told him that they needed him to save a little bit, lift a little bit early going into the corners, whereas his teammate, Brad Keselowski, they told him he was good to the end. So a little different uh, level of aggression between the two and 22 right now. Well, here's another difference. Keselowski has a win. Joey does not. That's good. Yeah, he can go hard. I mean, if he right. runs out, so what? Exactly. But it's just uh, these guys with enough fuel to make it to the end. I think the distance, I think they're too far back to really be serious challengers. Kozlowski in fourth. Here's his radio. Yeah, I'm trying, but I know you are. You got no issues out back. We get by that 24, the car will take off. 
What he's saying is, I'm trying to get around. They told him to go, and he's trying to go, but he can't get around the 24. Yeah, this is not Brad Keselowski trying to save fuel. This is him trying to pass at 24. And 24 is doing everything he can to save a little, but keep the two behind him. That could be the race for the win if these two in front, Dale Jr. and Kurt Busch, push too hard and used up too much fuel. Well, the lap times have just not slowed that much. I mean, that's right about no. what we've been running in the 52, 30, 40 range. That's what they're running right now. We get inside about two or three to go. Watch those lap times drop. Well, DW. <laughs> just that time by, Jeff. 52.93 on our leader. Now that's backed off, right? That's, that's slowing down save. right there. And it's I big. actually heard on the um, on board here with, with the 22 of Joey Logano, I heard him really <laughs> let now the throttle get back way late. So, the, you know, he's definitely saving. I thought he actually stayed in fourth gear the time before we were on board, but that time I heard him shift. Yeah, he just cut the end. I think he coasted in the corner that time with the engine off. And he's not shifting over the tunnel. Staying in high gear. That saves so much fuel. See what he does here into turn three. Well, he's letting off way early. He's still shifting. He's sort of doing it the Harvick way right there. He goes to third and on the gas pretty abrupt at the exact same time. You need a short shift. 12 laps to go at the stripe. Short shift means you put it back in fourth gear earlier than you normally would. Do a little, get a little shot and then put it back in fourth gear. That saves a little fuel. Now he's not even shifting. Shift. Yeah, he well, did. There yeah, he real late. But yes, he's, he's down shifting to get off the corner. He's see if he's quick back to second. You can see that he's yeah. lifting early. Watch his left knee. It's not really on the brake that hard going into turn one. That shows you how early he's lifting. 48's on pit road out of gas. Oh, well, he's out of the race anyway. Out. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just saw him come down pit road and I said, what happened to him? We're not used to him being no, off the pace. No, I didn't think we? about that. Sorry about that. Yeah, he's just back in the race and now going to stop and get topped off. Matt? Mike, a combo agenda for Chase Elliott in the 24. Al Gustafson told him, continue to save, save, save. Chase continues to go slower, almost eight tenths of a second slower than he was about 15 minutes ago. Also, Al said, whatever you do, try to keep the two in your mirror. So we've gone from how fast can you go to how <laughs> slow can you go? Well, how slow can you do and keep the two behind you? That's, that's a tough one. All right, Dale Jr.'s radio. I don't know if they're there. They have a, a system in place. They talk about go to two like that's their fuel mileage saving plan, like go to, to plan mm. two. I'm not exactly sure what that is. No, I don't either. And, and, you know, we heard the 24 talking about save fuel, save fuel. I think what he's doing, he's lifting early, allowing the two car to get to him, and he might actually get a run on him right here. I think yeah. he's got a chance to get by him. I think they just realized they have to save more fuel. But I was going to say that he was lifting early but getting back to the gas in a way where it was not allowing the two car to get by him. See, I would have done this much earlier. I would have gotten behind the two car. That's the draft him, save fuel. If you're that close, that would have been a good move, I think. Craig Biffle is pitted. Green flag stop with 10 to go. And you see what happens once Kozlowski's out in clean air. You know, you get to a point in a run like this where first you're trying to win the race, and then you're trying to save enough fuel to be the first car not to run out, and then you're just wanting to finish the race. So each lap goes by, they're going to start adjusting. You know, guys, when the checkered flag waved at Charlotte, we are halfway through the race to the chase, 13 down and 13 to go. And when I look at our top six right now, only one of those drivers has a win in the bank this year, and that's Brad Keselowski who has two. The other five looking for that first win. Let's get back to our leaders pit and Vince. Well, remember, Kurt Busch is working without his crew chief, Tony Gibson, today serving that one race suspension. 
his substitute crew chief, John Klossmeyer. Klossmeyer subbed for Gibson last year at Bristol when Tony had kidney stones. Klossmeyer told me before the race, he said, we really want to win. We want to get that first win. And we think that we're locked in points wise, but we are going to always kind of keep an eye on that risk versus reward. Well, right now they told Kurt just a moment ago, we've got to be a little more aggressive on our fuel saving. And you could hear the anxiety in the uh, rookie crew chief's voice. Yeah, the guy that's really coming now that he got around Chase Elliott is a two car Keselowski that time by about six tenths quicker than our leader. And Keselowski, we know, has a win in the bank and nothing to lose. Pushing pretty hard. Are you sure we can make it? Copy. Copy. I'll keep pushing hard. <laughs> I love it. Copy. Yeah, I just think the 41 is taking a little bit too much risk with the lap times he's been running. You know, he was battling with that 88 to maintain that lead. They already told him he was too short. I, did, I just haven't seen him save enough and slow down enough to be able to save the fuel to get to the end. Let's see what he's doing. He, uh, he's slowed down considerably. These last couple of laps, about three or four tenths of what he was running. Seven to go. Wow, that's Whoa. the engine's off. Quiet. Guys, that's the engine. He's shutting the engine off going into turn one. You just heard air flowing over the body of the car. That's what that whistle and sound is. And it's not hurting. He's not hurting his times that much doing he's it. He's doing an awesome. You know, the two car Brad Keselowski did this several years ago and won this race. Yep. Thanks to our cameraman, Eddie O, who called that in, said, I think he's coasting. I think he's out, you know. Shut off. Well, oh, he's going to coast to victory. <laughs> <laughs> On fumes. Well, his lead is increasing over Dale Earnhardt Jr. It increased a tenth that lap, so Jr.'s trying to save as much fuel as he is. Let's see what he does this time down into one. That seems to be where we uh, where he saves the most or cuts it off the most. And he's short shifted right there. Yep. The less RPMs that you can run on that engine, the less fuel you're going to use. Wow, look, look at, at our, look at RPM. Now I mean, that, the engine is. You know, you know what I think he's doing? He's pushing the clutch, clutch. in. Yeah, yeah, he's not shutting the engine off all the way. Right. He's pushing the clutch in because it went to the idle mode, which we can't hear the engine running at yeah. idle mode. Yeah, you can. I can understand going pushing the clutch in, but you, you turning the engine off would have been treacherous. What gets really challenging by doing that is when you have to release the clutch in the middle of the corner, and the rear end has to catch up with the speed of the car, and it can get away from you. Now he increased his lead to 1.4, but you see up in our box box, it's coming down. It's one second from Bush to Earnhardt, one and three quarter seconds to Keslowski. Let's watch Four. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Watch his RPM, see what he's doing to save fuel. Well, guys, he's short shifting a little, not quite as aggressive as the go. 41. Let's see what he does going into turn one. Yep. Now he's 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 not doing what the 41 doing, saving enough as much fuel as the 41 yeah, by he's just staying off the gas it. a long time. He's not clutching it though. But they didn't tell him he was two laps short, like they told Kurt. I just think I think Brad's in the in the best position of all of them. Yeah, you got the, the you got the situation with the gas. You don't you know trying to save fuel, and you got this guy in a two car that's running you down. You can hear right there, push the clutch and you can hear he's doing it. I don't know if he's doing it through the tunnel turn, but he's certainly doing it into one and into three. I'm hearing Elwood Blues. We've got a full tank of gas and we're wearing sunglasses. <laughs> there we go. And we're on a mission. <laughs> yes, we are. A mission to win. Is Four it to enough? go. Is it enough? <laughs> I think at these kind of races, they I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> they tear me up. I think, again, this just goes to the skill of Kurt Busch being able to do that. And it doesn't even look like he's bobbling at all. He's barely losing any lap time. Uh, you know, the engineering staff calculating this, doing an awesome job as well. Amazing. Let's listen in. Just keep saving. We'll flip the switch with one to go. Copy that. That's the audio of the 41, Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch, has done, he's doing his job. He's doing all he can yep. to win this race. If it runs out of gas, he can't do anything about it. I th where this gets really tricky is for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's got the two coming fast, not saving fuel. He's trying to save fuel to make it to the end, but also he doesn't want to let that two get ahead of him. And yep. here's the problem for the two drivers who have not yet won. 
if they run out of gas, there's 25 cars on the lead lap. It's going to be a horrible points day. You got a good chance here of being hero to zero. Yeah, but you know, sometimes you got to take these risks to, to make it into the chase or lock yourself into the chase. You just have to weigh it out. Is it worth it? But if the two gets around the 88, now if the two, if the 88 does run out of gas, I mean, that's, that's just misery right there. Well, well, think about this, right? They're trying to get a win to lock themselves in the chase. They've fallen back a little bit in points. If they don't finish this race, it's going to also be a big hit in the points. Yes. Two to go. Keslowski is there for second place. It's the worst place Dale Jr. could be in. I mean, he's got the two breathing down. If the two gets by him, now all this strategy, if he runs out of gas or he or he, he makes it even, and the two gets ahead oh, of him, all for naught. Oh, I thought he wiggled. I thought he wiggled right there off of turn one. Brad's working on him, man. He's working on him hard. Three and a half miles to go. Coming to the white flag. I was going to say, the best thing for Kurt Busch is this battle here for second. This last lap's... Yeah, he's opened up his lead now to a second and a half. The white flag will wave. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. If you run out now, Mike, you can't make it back. You can't coast all the way around this racetrack. We don't know if he's out of gas because we can't hear the engine. <laughs> it's up onto the back straightaway. I tell you, if he does make it, it's masterful bit hey, of he, teamwork. He have to take a lot of credit for making it. Absolutely. He really would. Yeah, what did he say the other day in the pre-race? He's A minus. They've been performing well, but not getting the final results. He makes here. it through this last corner. It's an A plus. I think he's going to make it. Kozlowski looks high on Earnhardt. For second place, Kurt Busch rounds off the corner. He made it. He, he can it. make it from here. Kurt Busch wins at Pocono. His 28th Sprint Cup win. Nice job, crew chief. Wow. Johnny Klausmeyer. So proud. So proud. Johnny Gunslinger. Johnny Gunslinger. Way to go, Johnny. Way to go, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, Gun Johnny Gunslinger. I like that. <laughs> How about that? First time on the box as a crew chief and you get a win. He becomes the first driver to win with an interim job, crew chief. Did a hell of a job all day. Since Matt Ken's at the Darlington in 2013. Thank you guys. Job well done. Job well done. And nobody ran out again. I just, these crew chiefs, <laughs> they're messing with us. They're messing with one another on pit road, I think. But Mike, that is a team effort. That is the driver, the crew, everybody did their job. I'm corrected. Jamie McMurray ran out of gas on the final lap and lost three spots at the flag. Now, if Kurt Busch comes over here and does a big burnout, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go down the garage area next week and have a talk with some of these guys trying to play games with us. Well, at the scene of Stuart Haas Racing's first cup win by that man, Tony Stewart in the 14, this is their 32nd Sprint Cup win and their second of the year. Fourth Chevrolet win of 2016. Third time that Kurt Busch will find victory lane at the Tricky Triangle. August 07, his last win here. Coming around for the checkered flag. And Kurt Busch taking home the checkered flag is today's Sunoco fueling victory. What a performance to come off that last restart and be told we're two laps short. Oh my. And to win it. Uh, there's that Amazing. burnout I was talking about. There we go. Oh, looping that thing. Wasn't Friday National Donut Day? <laughs> Now you're just showing off, Kurt. <laughs> Jeff, I have to say this. Those guys tell us everything we know. They just don't tell us everything they know. <laughs> I think it finally ran out. No. Nope. Nice nope, crowd for a Monday. As Kurt Busch has plenty left of the tank to light him up. Goodness. He didn't even 
need to spend all that effort clutching it down <laughs> into turn one. And a big thank you to our uh, Fox technical crew who loses a day off this week. They've got to get this race in the bank and then pack it up and race to Michigan. Looks like he's at the NHRA race with all these burnouts. And NHRA is coming up next from Epping, New Hampshire, the New England Nationals. Here's Matt. More laps today led by Chase Elliott than in the previous 18 races coming into Pocono. So what are you going to leave here today uh, as the biggest positive? Ah, uh, man, I, I don't know. I feel like we had a car that, that could do it today. And I wish I had been just a little more patient behind Dale. I uh, feel like I, I made a big mistake there in the tunnel and it gave Kurt a big run. So biggest thing is just learn and, and just be really proud that we had a super fast car, a car that could lead all day and uh, a group of guys that, that are willing to fight to try to get a victory lane. Thanks, Chase. Thanks. This Sunday, we'll be on FS1 from Michigan International yeah, Speedway. Yeah, yeah. Saturday, the Xfinity race with Dale Earnhardt Jr., the guest analyst, and then the cup race on Sunday. Jamie? And Brad Kozlowski is out of the car. What a day, an eventful one for the two crew. Two pit road penalties early, Brad. How were you able to fight back there and contend there at the end? Well, uh, it's a long day, but a, a overall decent weekend for the Miller Lite Ford. Uh, it wasn't really two pit penalties, it was two NASCAR penalties, and uh, I'm not sure I really know exactly what happened there. Uh, team guys can probably give a better answer, but uh, fought back really well, and uh, at the end we were, you know, I think capable of winning the race with a really fast car, and even with the right side door torn up, so uh, had a little contact there, I guess, when the 48 was spinning, so shows how uh, fast we were today, great pit stops, just didn't bring home the win, uh, but really close and been really strong consistent lately, Jamie, so something we're proud of. A lot of physical effort put in by these drivers today. Brad Keselowski brings it home third, Mike. A great effort. Did everything he could to close the deal. But Kurt Busch came from we're two laps shy on fuel. He had enough left to do burnouts, to drive up and down the grandstand, drive around pit road, and now back it up into position in victory I lane. I wonder if he could drive that car back to Charlotte. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's All acting like it. Smoky unit kind of <laughs> deals. Wow. But Mike, you know, it just shows how what these drivers are capable of doing. Whoa, what do we got here? Well, we've got we've got officials right, right at the two car, keeping any crewmen from yeah, the right out. side of the car uh, before NASCAR gets, I believe, a closer look at it afterward. Paul Wolf, right there, the crew yep. chief. But it just shows how these guys manage so much in these race cars, getting around the racetrack, the speed, and then you throw in the fuel mileage, shifting gears, clutching the engine. All you, kinds of things. You know, you heard some frustration in Chase Elliott's voice there. I'm never going to fault a young rookie driver for being aggressive, trying to win the race, trying to, even though it is his teammate, he was trying to get a, the pass for the lead to win the race. Unfortunately, that battle allowed Kurt Busch to get a run and get by him. Great, great effort by all those guys trying to win. You saw the track trophy here, emblematic of this coal region of Pennsylvania. That is a sculpted huge lump of coal the flag the eagle that's beautiful as is the sponsors trophy Vince Welch it has been a long time coming for Kurt Busch they have been so good throughout the course of the season but just haven't been able to finish it and today they did I thought Jeff Gordon had a great line he said you had given yourselves a grade of A minus this season. Today, you were an A plus. How difficult was it to save the fuel while keeping the lead? Well, thank you, uh, Vince and Jeff Gordon. I mean, it's tough to balance everything. And when you have a fast car and uh, an interim crew chief and the way that the fuel mileage played out, I didn't know if we were going to have enough fuel. But thanks to everybody at Haas Automation, Monster Energy, and Stuart Haas, this is a wonderful win for us. We've been so close all year. And it's a matter of just putting it all together. Pit crew, engine, thanks to Hendrick Engines and Chevrolet and everybody that works on these bodies, uh, the chassis, you name it. Uh, it's just so much fun to drive and to be competitive and to be up front. So thanks a lot. Very impressive. Kurt Busch wins at Pocono. A lot of folks are going to be spending some time trying to figure out how did he do it. Well, Kurt Busch stays in the left column and moves up a few spots. Nine drivers with wins, seven drivers currently heading for the chase for the Sprint Cup on points. He literally coasted to this win. 
I mean, you think about him clutching the engine, pushing the clutch in, coasting into the corners, saving that fuel. He was just saving fuel so he could do that awesome burnout. Amazing <laughs> performance by Kurt and that whole team. Great effort. That was fun to watch. Next Saturday, Xfinity Racing with Dale Jr. in the booth and next Sunday, Sprint Cup Racing from Michigan. Coverage begins 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. NHRA from New England coming up next. Thanks for joining us at the Tricky Triangle for the Exalta We Paint Winners 400, won by Kurt Busch. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. The leader was going to win the race. I was trying to keep the lead. And we got around each other and got, around, got together a little bit, I guess. It got me loose and gave the 41 a great run on us. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't hold him off. I, just, uh, I, I should have done a better job of holding him off. And I just couldn't do it. And, and could have done a couple things different, and then he wouldn't have got by us. But once he got in front of us, I was stuck behind him in, uh, in, uh, in his wake. Even though we might have been able to get through the corner a little better, uh, I just go, wasn't going to get to him. So pretty much one groove track. So they saved enough fuel. I was hoping he'd run out. But sometimes when you hope he was hope someone else runs out, you get the bad luck. So I didn't hope too much. Um, we just need to get a good finish. Um, disappointed we didn't win. We sure could have used a win today. But, you know, we're trying to get, get over a, a rough month, and this is a pretty decent way to do it. we got to get the car better, though. Carl wasn't as competitive as we needed to be. And we talked at the top of the show coming in five races without a top 10. Today, Junior almost walked away with the win, finishing second.